Hello, and welcome to the University of Oregon's 2021 Reach for Success. Even though we are unable to host you on our campus this year, we are very happy to have you join us virtually. My name is Rosa Chavez, and I'm the Interim Director for the Center for Multicultural Academic Excellence. A little bit about myself. I'm a first-generation college student, and that means my parents did not go to college. I'm also an immigrant and was raised in Oregon since I was three years old. I'm what you call a double duck. I have my bachelor's degree and a law degree, all from the University of Oregon. The CMAE is a special place on campus that primarily serves students from underrepresented backgrounds. We provide academic advising, programs, and support services. We consider ourselves a home base for students when they arrive on campus. When you come to college, you should always seek out resources and create your success team. The CMAE is a place I used to go to when I was in college. It was a place I could visit to hang out with friends, get information, and help finding my way around campus. The purpose of Reach for Success is to give you a sneak peek into the college life and to highlight some of the great experiences you could have and a few of the many things you could study. We want you to see yourself in college and believe you can get here. Our goal is to provide you with the information you need to set yourself on the path to higher education. We hope you enjoy your virtual visit to University of Oregon campus. And as always, go Ducks. Hello everyone, my name is Barbara Marbury and I'm the Bridge Programs Coordinator in the CMAE on the UO campus. I'm very excited to have you join us today for our virtual Reach for Success event. When we are operating under normal circumstances, one of the things that I look forward to the most is our annual Reach for Success event. I just love all the energy that middle school students bring to our campus and all the great questions that they ask and seeing the excitement that being on a college campus bring to many. Even though we can't be in person this year, I do hope that you will enjoy the program that we have put together for you. Today, you will tour the University of Oregon campus and some of our residential spaces. You will hear from UO students about their college experience and also learn about some of the things that you are studying. You will hear about some of the very cool subjects that you can study, some you may know about, and others may be subjects that you didn't even know were a thing you could study. Our goal for today is that you will be able to see yourself in college, learn about resources, get some of your questions answered, and have some fun during your virtual visit. There will be opportunities to ask questions through the chat. If you think of questions after today's event ends, you may always reach out to me. Today's event will be recorded and made available on our website and through YouTube for later viewing. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the presentations and learn a lot. Hi everyone, my name is Annie. I'm going to be your ambassador today. I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. I'm a junior majoring in international studies with two minors, one in food studies and another in leadership administration skills. A little bit about me, I'm involved on the Alpine ski team here on campus as well as the outdoor program. I know it's a stressful time right now and some of you might be concerned, but I'm excited to show you the campus today. Right over here, we have Matthew Knight Arena, home to our men's and women's basketball team, as well as our women's acrobatic and tumbling and volleyball team. We do have more than just sports in here. We have performers such as Elton John, the Dalai Lama, right here in Matthew Knight. Right behind me here, we have the John E. Jaqua Academic Center for Student Athletes. It is required that all NCAA Division I schools have a building for their student athletes' academic success. And here, student athletes can get help with tutoring, academic advising. Do note that all the resources they get in here, other students like myself get on other parts of campus. Right over here, we have the University Health Counseling and Testing Center, and here we have a full service health clinic here for all enrolled students with services such as physical therapy, dentists. We also want to make sure our students are not only healthy physically, but also mentally. Upstairs, we have a counseling center with group therapy, one on one sessions, therapists, and counselors on call at all times, as well as an academic testing center where students can take placement tests and mock exams. Right over here, we have the Robert and Beverly Lewis Integrative Science Building. Here, you can conduct your own research for undergrads as well as graduate students. If you don't want to conduct your own research, you can always be a part of someone else's research study. Located 17 feet below us are the Lori I. Lowkey Laboratories. These are located underneath bedrock to minimize all the vibrations from above ground. There's microscopes in there that can see something as tiny as a single gold atom. 
We are in Willamette Hall, home to our physics department, our general science program, our material science institute, and our institute for theoretical sciences. Tucked right there in the corner is Willamette Hall, home to our biology, chemistry, biochemistry departments. Something cool to note is there's a lot more of campus you won't be able to see today. We have a campus on the Oregon coast for marine biology students, as well as a submarine that we share with the Coast Guard. Tucked underneath Kalamit Hall are human cadaver labs. This is great for our human physiology students or science students to do hands-on research. Personally, you couldn't catch me dead down there. Here we are in the Price Science Library. This is one of five libraries located on campus. Yes, it's the Science Library, but this facility is open to all students here on campus, including the makerspace in here, where we have a laser cutter, 3D printer, and industrial sewing machine. Right behind me here is Allen Hall, home to our School of Journalism and Communication. They have incredible clubs and organizations in here, such as Duck TV, Flux Magazine, Allen Advertisement Team that works with businesses such as Adobe. Right over here we have Lawrence, which is home to the College of Design. We offer programs such as architecture, product design, planning, public policy and management, and art. Within our architecture program, we really like to focus on sustainability. Here on campus, numerous buildings are LEED, gold, if not platinum certified. Right over here is Friendly Hall, home to some of our foreign language departments. We offer 22 different foreign languages here on campus. As you can see, there's lots of beautiful trees around me. Fun fact, our campus is an arboretum. We have over 5,000 trees with over 400 different species. Right over here is Tyson Hall, home to the College of Arts and Sciences. We offer academic and career advising in this building to help students find classes to make sure they're graduating on time and on track to find that job post-grad. They'll help you out with looking over resumes, helping with mock interviews, career fairs, and career advising. Right over here we have the Lillis Business Complex, home to the Charles H. Lindquist College of Business. Within this department we offer two majors including accounting and business administration. Within the business department we have incredible clubs such as Women in Business, Oregon Consulting Group, Warsaw Sports Marketing, Sustainable Business Club. We also have incredible academic advisors within the business department and a tutoring center right on the first floor. This is also the most photogenic building on campus. As you can see, that O was put up there in 2012 when we hosted ESPN College Game Day. They liked it so much, they kept it up there. Some people say it's the largest bumper sticker in the world. I think it makes a great photo opportunity. Right over here is Chapman, home to the Clark Honors College. This is available for all majors, all minors. This gives students the opportunity to take smaller classes, to write and conduct a thesis your senior year. The Honors College gives students that small liberal arts college feel in a large research university. Here we are in the Herb Memorial Union. This is our student union. We all call it the EMU for short. And here students can gather and study, grab food, most of our student groups are based out of this building. We have over 250 clubs and organizations on campus. Like I said, I'm involved on the Alpine Ski Team through Club Sports and the Outdoor Program as I'm a trip initiator, leading and conducting my own trips, just to name a few things. Right over here, we have our craft center. This is free for students to come in, take classes. We have glass blowing, screen printing, ceramics, woodwork, painting, fabrics, photography, and the list goes on and on. Here we are in our Student Recreation Center. This is included in students' tuition and fees. You can come in here and rent out equipment, take classes. They have great hours from 6 a.m. to midnight. A few of the classes that they offer here at the Recreation Center are CrossFit, kickboxing, cycling, yoga, stand-up paddleboard yoga. You can even get scuba certified in our pool. Hello everyone, I know things are changing quickly. I'm currently back home in San Luis Obispo, California and wanted to finish up the video. I first wanna wish you all good luck with your college admission process. I wanna thank you for coming on a campus tour with me. Take care and go Ducks. Justice Bean Hall, one of our 10 residence halls on campus. 
Over here, you will see a new residence hall being built, which will be completed this fall and we're very excited about it. Living on campus is required for all first year students. Students who live in the residence hall their first year, on average, have higher GPAs, are more likely to return for their second year, and are graduating faster. This is because living on campus gives you the support and connections you need to be successful as a duck. Let's go check out the inside of Justice Bean Hall. Here we are in our Justice Bean Commons area. There are lots of spaces for students to study and connect with other students. All of our residence halls have lounges, study rooms, opportunities to connect with faculty, and common spaces such as music practice rooms or maker spaces. Most all of our residence halls also have community kitchens, which you will see two community kitchens here in Justice Bean Hall. One way that students can get even more out of their first year experience is to join one of our academic residential communities or residential communities. This is an opportunity for students to live with other students who have similar passions, identities, majors, or interests. Some examples include business, Latinx scholars, performing artists collective, as well as our multicultural residential communities. Next, let's go check out a room in Justice Bean Hall. So before we go and check out the residence hall room, I just want to make sure that you all know all of our residence halls have lounges and study areas in them. This is a great place for students to study and connect with other residences. Here, we're in a lounge on the third floor of Justice Bean Hall. So let's go check out that residence hall room. So I am now here in a residence hall room in Justice Bean Hall. This room type is a double room, which means it's meant for two people. In our rooms, each student is going to have a bed. They're also going to have a desk space so you can study and work on homework and all those great things. And every room is going to come with a closet. You can get a little sneak peek into what one of those looks like. I know sometimes people think it's a little bit small, but don't worry, you're not going to need too many things when you're living on campus. Right now, when students are registering for housing, they actually get to choose their own room, kind of like choosing seats on an airplane or for an event. Students even get to have a say in who their roommate is, and having a good roommate experience is one of the most important parts to your first year experience living on campus. So you're gonna be answering questions about what time do you like to wake up in the morning? How do you like to study? How clean do you like to have your space? And you'll be able to connect with other students to find someone who's gonna be the best fit roommate for you. We have a lot of different room types in our residence halls, not just this double room. There are triple rooms, there are rooms that have sinks, even rooms that have private bathrooms. In this particular residence hall in Justice Bean Hall, we have clusters of individual restroom spaces to give students convenience and privacy. Next, I wanna take you to one of our dining venues and talk a little bit more about food on campus. Right now, we are outside of Global Scholars Hall, another one of our residence halls on campus. This fall, we will have 14 unique dining venues across five of our 10 different buildings. So while not every building has a dining venue, you'll always be close by to one. In a moment, we'll take you through a quick walkthrough of Fresh Market Cafe in Global Scholars Hall. Here, you can get fresh sushi, make your own pasta and rice bowls, smoothies, and more. So let's check it out. Kalakuya Ilahi, another one of our residence halls on campus, and I have a very special guest with us, Jules, who is a resident assistant and is just going to answer some questions about living on campus. So, welcome. Thank you. So, first question for you is can you just tell us a little bit about what year you are, when you're graduating, what you're majoring in, all yeah, of those things? I can. I am a senior here at the UO. I am majoring in political science and minoring in planning, public policy, and management. And I am from Los Angeles, California. And you're graduating this spring? And I'm graduating this Are spring. Are you very excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> Excellent. So can you tell us a little bit about what your experience was living in the residence halls your first year? I can. I was initially just blown away by the natural beauty on campus. That was something definitely new to me as a Californian. And then second of all, I was just really impressed by the community on campus because I was afraid that such a big school would have not as much community, but that was not the case. I lived in the quiet community, it was a great place to study, and I was able to make a lot of friends that I'm still friends with to this day. 
Awesome. So you're also a resident assistant in the Living Learning Center. So can you tell us a little bit more about what being a resident assistant or an RA is about? Yeah. I've been an RA for two years now, and I think the RAs are basically upperclassmen who have navigated all the crazy stuff and the fun stuff about freshman year and are able to now impart some of that wisdom to the new students and help them navigate campus, navigate all the things that are going on on campus, and also foster a sense of community amongst all the freshmen that are from all different places around the country. Yeah. Well, the RAs are a very important job, so yes. you're, and I'm sure you're awesome about it. Oh. <laughs> Um, so what's one piece of advice that you would give to a first year student transitioning and moving into the residence halls and just their first year of college in general? I would definitely say just take advantage of all the opportunities. There is always a social or academic opportunity going on at all times. So just using your resources to find them, asking your RA, looking it up, and you'll never be bored. <laughs> Alright, so one last question, which is a fun one. What is your favorite food or meal from the dining menu? Uh, there's a lot of good options, but I would have to say the pasta from GSH. It's really cool because you can customize it however you want, but the mac and cheese is pretty perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that great information. Really appreciate it. If you want to learn more about what it means to be a duck living on campus, you can visit housing.umorgan.edu. Thanks for joining us, and go ducks! Hi again, we have one more thing for you. You know that new residence hall I mentioned earlier? We're going to show you a sneak peek of what that looks like and we're excited for it to be done this fall. Enjoy! I hope you enjoyed your tour of the campus and our housing, and I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek of the new residence hall. You've now seen something that our on-campus students and our students who will be returning in the fall haven't even seen yet. So I hope you enjoyed your tour. One of the cool things about being on campus is that you can also have a campus job. And so today, my student assistant, Teresa, is going to be sharing with you a little game we've put together to test your college knowledge. You'll have an opportunity to see questions. We'll give you a little bit of time to uh, answer the questions and then we'll show you the answer. So we just hope you'll have fun with this. And um, Teresa, take it away. If you're Hi, in everyone. Classrooms, sorry, Teresa, I didn't mean to talk over you. If you're in your classrooms, you can just raise your hand or uh, whatever works best for you. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Teresa. I am a third year student here at UO studying psychology and Spanish. Um, as Barbara said, I'm, I'm her assistant, so I get to work with her. Um, and today we're going to be testing your uh, University of Oregon trivia. Um, so rules, just participate in the chat. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, if you're in a classroom, discuss with like your peers if on the answers and then come together on one. Um, you're gonna be having about 30 seconds to answer the questions and then um, after that, then I'll reveal the answers. Um, okay. Okay, first question. Uh, what percent of UO students are from Oregon? Uh, A, 12%, B, 32%, C, 52% or D, 
I was actually quite surprised when I found out um, that it's actually 52% of U.S. students are from Oregon. So there's a lot of in-state um, students here at UO, especially because it's a lot cheaper to go in-state um, for college. Okay. Um, how many undergraduate major and minor areas of study are available to study at the UO? Um, this one I forgot to update the next slide. Um, uh, Barbara, if uh, you could, I didn't get the right answer on this one. There are over 300 majors and minor areas of study available at the U of O. There we go. Okay. Um, true or false? Uh, Dreamers, undocumented, and mixed family students are able to receive money for college. Let's go ahead and show the answer for that one. And it is true. Um, there are more than seven scholarships at the UO that students may apply for. Um, students not eligible um, to fill out a FAFSA um, may fill out the ORSA. I am actually one of those students that um, I came to the UO and I come from a mixed status family. So it's very possible for everybody to come. Um, how can you earn college credit before... Um, How can you earn college credit while you're still in high school? Um, it, a, take approved AP or IB courses in high school, um, take classes through the College Now program, or is it, it is not possible or none of the above? A and B, you can actually earn college credit by taking approved AP and IB courses or College Now classes can also earn college credit for you. Um, you just have to make sure um, to keep in the back of your head when you're taking these classes that um, some colleges do, depending on which college you go to, uh, some take certain AP and I, IB courses, some don't. So just check and see um, before if you're planning on taking these for college credit. Um, true or false, you must have all A's and B's to be accepted into the University of Oregon. It is false. You must have at least a C average, but acceptance may be limited if the GPA standard is higher for that school. Um, I can tell you, I definitely did not have uh, straight A's in high school and I still made it to college. So as long as you've got um, the energy to learn, you're good to go. Um, which of these are ways to pay for college? A, grants, lo B, loans, C, work study, D, university scholarships, E, pathway, F, tuition equity, G, private scholarships, H, personal funds, or uh, I, all of the above. And it's all of the above. Um, I use quite a few of these. I have grants, 
Um, and then I also have work study, which is, is how I work with Barbara. Um, I have university scholarships. Uh, I have DES Diversity Excellence Scholarship. And then I'm also am a uh, pathway organ mentor. And pathway um, is a program that helps you uh, pay for four years of your college tuition. Um, how many students are currently at the U of O? Uh, a, 15,300, uh, B, 19,122, C, 22,760, D, 25,400. And the number is 22,760 students are currently enrolled at the UO. Um, how many different student groups and organizations are there at the UO? A, 100 plus, 200 plus, 300 plus, or D, 400 plus? The answer. Oh. And the answer is 300 plus student groups and organizations at the UO. Um, you can find organizations that are based off of your hobbies, sports you play, or even uh, racial uh, identities, or um, there's also like um, LARP, live action role play um, that I remember seeing on campus once. Um, in how many countries can you study abroad at the UO? A25, B45, C50, or D80? You can study in 80 countries through the UO. What was the nickname for the UO before they became the Ducks in 1947? A, the chickens, B, the webfoots, C, the tall timbers, D, the cougars. It is the webfoots. True or false, the UO is the only university to have a Disney character as our mascot. It is true. In 1947, the UO shook hands with Disney as an agreement to use Donald Duck as our sports mascot. And there we go. Hope you all enjoyed learning a couple fun facts about UO. Thank you for all of those great questions, Teresa. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there. Um, we are actually a little bit ahead on our uh, presentation today. And in just a little while, we will have some uh, University of Oregon students joining us and they will help you with a uh, presentation um, about some of the amazing things that you can study. Uh, at this time, if anyone has any questions, um, you can feel free to send them to the chat. Um, Teresa, since you are here, um, I think I'll put you on the spot and just ask you, um, what has been uh, one of the most exciting things or um, that you've been able to learn, experience, or do since you've been a college student? That's a, that's a hard one. Um, I think the mo most exciting thing I think that I've learned while in college is that like nobody, that I can just be myself. Um, I feel like I've definitely grown out of my comfort zone. And the, the major thing that I've learned is like, I'm not gonna know if I'm good at it unless if I try it. 
So I tr I've definitely stretched out of my comfort zone and tried out a lot of different things that I didn't think I would end up liking or were interested at all in high school. Um, like I joined Mecha, which is um, a Latinx social justice uh, group that we have here on campus. Um, and I never like, I never took time to learn about social justice issues within the Latino community. Um, like I knew what, like me being Latina, I didn't, I knew what affected me, but I didn't take time to learn about other issues. So then I got really passionate about those issues through that um, group that I wasn't planning on sticking through, but I've been part of it for two years now. Um, and they've helped me grow by making sure that I know how to like stand up for um, my community, but also stand up for others and making sure they're receiving what they need. Um, then I have also taken on leadership positions that I didn't even think I would do in my life. Like I became the president of a uh, multicultural sorority, um, Gamma Alpha Omega. Um, and we're here, we, sh we work to like empower women within each other, um, making sure we're achieving our higher education goals. Um, and I've been helping them out as their president. Never did I think I would be a president of an organization, but it's helped me grow a lot as individually and my leadership skills. So take any chance you have to do something new. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate those words of wisdom. If there is one thing uh, that you wish you had known before you came to college or as you were trying to figure out how to get to college, uh, can you think of what that might be? Don't do anything last minute. And this goes even for once you get into college. Um, it takes time planning things. Um, I definitely have a bad habit of do, waiting till last minute to do anything. Like looking for scholarships, I always do it last minute and then I end up um, just making a mess out of it. Um, so take your time with everything, plan it out. Um, using like any time you have to like organize yourself, make a list of everything that you have to like do. So like I would recommend making a list of like scholarships you're gonna apply to and like all the deadlines. So you know how to space out what you need to write, what essays you need to write. Um, make sure you space out your, your um, applications for um, the universities you're applying to. Then even when you come into college um, for classes, make sure you're spacing out all your homework um, because you may think you can get it all done last minute, but it's not. It's just so stressful and unnecessary that if you plan everything out, um, you'll find a good balance in it and it'll, it'll all be done at, at a good, like at a good level of, yeah, I love it. You. Well, I just didn't know you were so wise. So I'll ask you one more question. Um, as you were, if, I don't know if you can remember back all the way to middle school and high school, but uh, what um, kinds of resources did you make use of? How did you find help as you were getting ready to uh, make your way to college? Um, something that I always want, like, made sure I was doing was like doing programs that were connected to the UO or to any universities. Um, one program, I'll start off with one program that I didn't do was uh, at my high school, they had a program where you could sign up and then you could go to Stanford and like stay there for a week. Um, but that one cost money and the plane ticket to get there. So I didn't do that one. But I always look for programs like that. And then luckily I found here two here at UO um, that helped me out a lot, um, especially because like every year um, they were yearly things that I would come to. Uh, and that was Oregon Young Scholars Program, OISP, which was run by Barbara. Um, and then there's the sale, uh, which uh, students Some achieve. Work. Summer Academy oh. to Inspire Learning. Yes, Summer Academy to Inspire Learning. Um, I only did sail one year, but I did OISP for every, all four years. Um, I didn't think like I was gonna be using them as a resource when I was applying to college, but they definitely helped me a lot. And it helped me um, prepare uh, mentally because uh, for, for what I was gonna need for college, because since freshman year, they're like, you're gonna, um, 
you're going to be having to like look at financial aid, um, apply it, make sure you apply for your FAFSA. So that the first day that like I heard FAFSA was dropping for like me being a senior, I was on there at October 1st, right when it dropped and I was filling out my FAFSA because I always remembered that OISP told me fill out your FAFSA the first day it comes out. So definitely do programs that like integrate you into the um, college life or try to. Um, I had uh, through OISP, there was like classes that definitely gave me like a perspective into like the college um, classroom. I didn't think back then that that's how the college classroom was, but now that I see it definitely was. Um, it's very fast paced. Um, so it helped me out a little, get ready for it. Um, and then that's a sale I got to like do a uh, product design. I was through sale. I feel like I got to explore more uh, majors. Like I could pick like different um, focuses for the week. Um, so that was pretty cool. So it's like I was able to explore some different things outside of what I wanted to, what I thought I wanted to study. So yeah, so definitely recommend getting involved with UO programs or specific to your college that you want to go to. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you one more question. If there's anyone uh, attending today that might not be sure that they are college material or that they can make it in college, do you have any words for them, any thoughts for them about that? You can definitely make it in college. I came to college thinking everybody here was like, we were all going to get straight A's. Like if you didn't have straight A's, you weren't a good student. But it's, I've learned that there's more to grades than that. There's more to being like smart than just grades. Um, because sometimes there's people in my classes that they don't seem like they, like they, like they don't do well on tests, but then when they're talking, when we're discussing about the topics in classes, they have so much to say about the topics that, that like evens out. So it's, it's very, um, there's a lot of ways for you to show how you learn within the classrooms, whether it be on tests or um, discussion. So how do I say this? Um, there's, Coming to college is going to be a place where you could probably find someone that has the same learning style as you. And I think that helped me a lot because I found people who like stud who had the same learning style as me. And like, we're not like the best of the best students, but we still learn something and we're able to um, keep each other accountable and keep up the, I lost where I was going, <laughs> but work together to, um, be good students and then we're still learning everything so college is for everyone it might be hard like it might take a little more time to adjust to it um, I definitely took more time to adjust to the college life than other students but I'm still here um, don't if you if there's a slim chance of you wanting to go to college try for it um, it doesn't hurt to fill out an application and see if you get accepted Thank you again so much today. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you letting me put you on the spot like that. And I really appreciate all the work you do. So thank you. And now I am going to ask our uh, interim director of the CMAE, Rosa Chavez, to join us again. And Rosa, as someone who has been working with um, college students, I believe for over 12 years now, you're also the mother of um, two boys um, who've been through middle school and high school. And so I'm just wondering, um, what advice would you have for students in middle school that are thinking about starting this journey? Or is there something that you really wanna make sure they know and understand about starting the journey to college? Thank you, Barbara. That's a really good question. I think, um, I think if you want to go to college or you're curious about it, or if you're someone like me who's coming from a first generation college background where my parents didn't go to college, um, but I knew I wanted to go, um, and so you don't know kind of where to start. I think being a middle schooler, um, 
the teachers, the staff, there, there's bound to be absolutely more than one person that you can connect with. If it's your science teacher um, and you really like what you're learning, um, that person is someone that you want to tell. You want to tell as many people um, there at your middle school that you want to go to college, that you love what you're learning, um, and that you want to go and ask them, ask them questions, you know, Mr. Uh, so-and-so, you know, how did you um, become an English teacher? What, what is it that you did? Um, people want to help students. People want to help um, the folks that are in their classrooms. And I think, um, I think sometimes as students, I remember uh, being in middle school and, you know, their teachers and their, um, they're a different type of being. <laughs> and so there's something that, you know, I, I didn't have any teachers, obviously, in my family, since I'm a first generation college student, but we forget, you know, that all of the people that you have in your school, they had to go to college, they went to college um, to be there. So they know exactly how to do it, or they can at least tell you what their journey is. And so I would say, um, take advantage of that. And when you move on to high school, um, tell the folks there too. Tell the folks that you're interested. Let it be known. Um, and don't let people um, derail you. Um, I just had a conversation with a dear friend and we were talking about um, college. And she was talking about how when she told her high school counselor and the counselor said, well, why do you want to go to college? Like, why should you go to college? Those people aren't there to help you. So find people who are, find people who believe in you. And if you go to high school and you are having a hard time finding those people, remember the folks in your middle school who are more than happy to help you. Um, but let people know what your goals are because you are bound to find someone who believes in you and who can help you navigate um, how to get there. Thank you, Rosa, I appreciate that. Uh, one of my favorite things to tell students, if you find people who are telling you no, and you just keep going till you find someone who's telling you yes. So I haven't talked much about um, support services that you can find on a college campus and particularly at the U of O. Um, the CMAE is a pretty unique place on campus. And so I'm wondering if you'd share a little bit about um, the kinds of support you can get um, at the U of O and in the CMAE and maybe even other places, just kinds of things that students should be reaching out for to help them be successful. Yeah, of course. So when you think of like your middle school, um, you have a counselor, you have kind of an office that you can go to for, for supporting questions, maybe guidance if you didn't get the right classroom, if you didn't get the right class, um, you wanna join a club, you wanna start a club. Um, we can help you navigate that. So specifically at CMAE, the way I like to explain it to, to students, it's kind of like that homeroom, that advisory classroom. So you can go there, we can help you pick out the right classes. We can help you talk about majors. Um, we can help you, well, what is a major? What is a minor? Um, for me, again, as a first generation college student, I didn't fully understand what all of that meant. So we kind of we not kind of, we do help explain what that means. And we also connect you to resources as Teresa and as the videos you just saw about all the life on campus. If you think of campus, any college or university as a little city to itself, you're gonna find resources there. You're gonna find something that interests interest you. So if you're interested in like an LGBT club, if you're interested in a Mecha club, like Teresa said, um, there's, there's spaces for you. If you didn't have those things in high school or in middle school, like clubs that you know you want to learn more about, maybe an astronomy club, maybe a, um, I think one of the students mentioned uh, going on field trips and, and checking out the, the trip initiator program where you can say, hey, who wants to go to the coast with me? I'm planning to look at an old growth forest to learn more about that. So there's a ton of different things you can do that pertain to what you're interested in. Maybe you wanna learn how to make some jewelry, make soap. Um, maybe you wanna join the band, the marching band club or anything like that. There's all kinds of things for you to do. They can be just strictly for fun. Um, just learning about new things, new people, new places. Um, and they can also be things related to what you want to do when you grow up, if there's an astronomy club or if there's a business club. So there's a lot of things you can do. Most importantly, wherever, whenever you go uh, to college, um, like Barbara said, find those yeses. I'm interested in doing this. Um, I'm interested in doing that. So finding people that you can talk to and ask them questions is really important. Um, if there's something that isn't available for you, but you really think that there should be, 
go ahead and ask and see where can I start this? Where can I make a club for this? Um, usually there's support for folks to get that going. Um, and so there's all kinds of organizations and clubs that you can um, start or engage or look into. But part of college is taking those classes, but part of those um, the big part of college, though, is really trying new things, learning new things outside of the classroom. And those are the really fun pieces of college. Not that classes aren't fun, but those the but really fun outside of classes. And the learning and friendship happens outside of those classes a lot of time. So, you know, I would say, you know, don't do it alone. No one does it alone. And so find help, find support. Um, there's nothing... Um, there's no dumb question. There's no embarrassing question. Um, if you're procrastinating, if something's going on, reach out to someone, reach out to an advisor, reach out to uh, a professor, a staff member, because there are bound to be lots of people who are invested in your success, because really we want you to, to be successful, to graduate, to go on and have amazing opportunities in your life. And if you come across some troubles, um, find those resources because people are there to help. Just like in middle school and in high school, um, there's all kinds of folks who have um, access to information and can tell you about different things you can do in order to be successful and to help you out. Thank you so much for all of that great information, Rosa. And you actually uh, hit on a keyword that will be really important for one of the next presentations we have coming up. Um, a lot of students don't know the, what is a major and what is a minor. Would you mind explaining that a little bit more? Sure. So a major means that it's the emphasis that you're coming to college for. So let's say right now um, in middle school, all you took were science classes and then maybe you could pick some electives and I know most of you right now there's electives like um, art or um, a language elective or something like that but your major is you're going to be taking most of your classes in a type of subject so for example if I want to be an architect maybe most of the classes I take are architecture um, maybe I want to be an English teacher or, or a writer or work somehow with literature. Um, so I want to be an English major. So I'm going to take most of my classes or a lot of my classes are going to be in English. Maybe I want to study international affairs and the way the world is. And so I'm going to be an international studies major. And most of my classes are going to be about international studies. That's kind of, that's what we call a major. So it's your main focus. Um, that's because that's the area that you're really interested in, that you really want to when you graduate from college, you want a career in that area, or um, use that knowledge in a, a lot of different ways after you graduate. Now, a minor is something that you're interested in, but you don't want to take it um, completely as a major. For example, uh, maybe you're an international studies major. I'll just use myself as an example. So that was my major. So I really liked international studies. Most of my classes, that's where I was going to be taking my classes in. Now, I also was really interested in environmental studies. So what happens to the world um, when people move, when we create waste? Um, how can we make um, you know, decisions to create a healthier world? And so I took classes and made that my minor because I wanted those classes to, so I could learn more about how that worked um, with my international studies and how it worked because it was something that I was interested in. You can always make something a minor if you want to just learn a little bit about it or you want it to inform your major. So sometimes they go hand in hand and sometimes they're completely different because you're like, I absolutely love English. Um, I love novels. I'm gonna read that, but I'm really interested in physics and I really like that part because I want to be an astronaut someday but I really like reading like science fiction books and I like that so you make that your minor so it really just depends on what you're interested in and how much time you spend in something and there's all kinds of majors um, and there's so many I think as a college student first generation college student we only think of a couple of them and that's a conversation I have with my students when they come to see me. Most of us think of a business major, um, a lawyer, um, some kind of a science right, or maybe, maybe a teacher, um, but it's usually kind of a couple of majors, but there's all kinds of majors. You can major in cinema studies at the UVO, which is amazing. Um, there's people who have gone to, to the UVO who have done work on that Grimm's show in Portland, 
or have helped work on movies or um, all kinds of amazing cool things. Um, there's a folklore degree that you can get in. You could um, major in ethnic studies, in, in music. So all kinds of things um, that really, um, that are gonna take something that you're passionate about and hopefully something um, after you graduate college, you can really form a career out of that. But that's in general, the major and minor. One you take a lot of classes in and the other one, not as many, um, kind of a side interest that you may have in it. Thank you, Rosa. That's awesome information and perfect segue into what they'll be hearing next. And uh, I should also point out that you are a perfect example of being able to come to college, study what you are passionate about, and still entering a different uh, field. So Rosa actually went on and got a law degree. So it just shows that you don't have to come and major in political science to go into law school, and you don't have to major in science to go um, necessarily to medical school. And the other question I had is, do you have to come to college knowing what you want to major in? That's a great question. Absolutely not. I had no idea. <laughs> um, and then you take some classes. You, you work with an advisor to take classes to explore your interest, and eventually you land what you're in. My last year of, no, my, my last term of my freshman year, I took an introduction at international studies class, and you know the light bulb went off, and I thought, this is when I want to study. This is amazing. This is wonderful. Um, but no, you do not need to um, know what to study for. I think a lot of people say I'm majoring in this in college or I'm majoring in that in college. And half the time people change because you come to college and you're like, mm, you know, no, I don't like that. I'm, I've actually took this class and I love it. So be very open-minded, but be, also work with um, an advisor who can help guide you in exploring because you want you don't want to explore <laughs> For, for too long because you really do want to graduate, but you can always work with someone to help explore that. But absolutely, um, you don't have to be a science major. I had a student who was um, double majored in Japanese and I think in journalism, I think, and then she minored in chemistry and then she applied to medical school because she really want to, wanted to learn all kinds of things. Um, I did not major in poli sci, I didn't minor in political science, um, but I still went and got a law degree. And then of course I have a law degree and a bachelor's degree and um, I'm doing this job. And so that also um, doesn't, isn't a clear line of what kind of career I have um, because your life um, takes you in all kinds of direction and a college degree just makes those options and choices much more available um, than if you didn't have a college degree. Thank you, Rosa. I really appreciate that. And I will just ask you one more question. If there is just one thing you would want uh, middle school students to know or think about, um, do you know what that would be? Yes, I would tell all middle schoolers that you can absolutely go to college. And I'm speaking to those students who were like me specifically. If you're a first generation college student, if you're an immigrant, if you're a low income student, um, if you know, you're know you not finding that perfect fit in, in middle school, if you're not gonna find that perfect fit in high school, um, those are important times of your life, but um, college really lets you grow into who you want to be and who you're going to become. And you can absolutely go to college. There, um, there's lots of ways of getting here and lots of people who you will meet who will help you get here. So do not doubt that you can do it. Do not doubt that you can be successful because um, I'm a perfect example as many of the students that you will see um, today are examples of how you can go to college and how you can be successful regardless of what background you come from. Thank you so much, Rosa. We appreciate all your words of wisdom and we thank you for spending this time with us today. And I also like to let students know that if you have questions, if you're starting to explore, you can always reach out to any of us uh, in the Center for Multicultural Academic Excellence and we will connect you to our campus partners who can answer your questions. So know that it's never too early to start asking questions about how can I get to college? And if you're interested in the University of Oregon, how can I get there? So Rosa and Teresa, I really appreciate all of your input today. And I hope that those of you who are listening uh, found something helpful today. So today um, we have joining us um, four students who are part of our UO orientations program. They are what we call multicultural ambassadors. 
And that is an example of another job that you can have on campus. As I mentioned earlier, uh, as a student, you can have a job on campus that will help you um, with your tuition cost or buy books or just having money to spend. And so I think what I would like to do today, uh, before we get started on our next segment, um, since we are um, oh, just about on time now, I'm going to go alphabetically and ask um, our student ambassadors to just come on and introduce yourself, just to give us your name, uh, your year in school, your major, and where you're from. And so I will start um, alphabetically with Abraham. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. So my name is Abraham. I am currently a senior finishing up my last term here at the University of Oregon. I come from a very small town in Oregon called Stanfield. So if anybody's familiar with um, Northeast Oregon, I'm pretty close to the border of Washington and Idaho. Um, I am majoring in Spanish and double minoring in sociology and computer and information science. Um, was there something else I was to cover? No, that's good for now. Thank you. All right. We'll be asking you more questions later. Thank you, Abraham. Nice to have you here. And we have Ethan. Hey, y'all. I'm Ethan. I'm a second year sophomore at the University of Oregon. I am a business administration major with a marketing concentration, as well as a computer information technology minor. I'm from a town in, the Cal in California called Dublin. Uh, it's really close to the Bay Area. Thank you for being here, Ethan. And Kelsey is here today. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see everybody. My name is Kelsey. I am currently a junior, meaning third year at the University of Oregon. I am currently majoring in psychology and I have a minor in business and I plan to one day be a therapist. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Oh. Thank you. Was there something you wanted to add? Okay. Thank you, Kelsey. And we have Sarita. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarita. I am currently a sophomore, double majoring in psychology and Spanish. I am from a pretty small town in Texas called Lubbock. Um, it's where Texas Tech University is, if anyone knows. Um, and yeah, and I plan to go into research when I'm older. Thank you, Sarita. We appreciate you being here. So for our next portion of our program today, uh, we're going to uh, introduce you to some areas of study. Uh, we know, as Rosa said, uh, we always know about things like business and maybe math or science, but we'd like to introduce you to some things that you may or may not know about. And our wonderful student ambassadors are going to take you through this tour today. And we have about 16 um, different uh, areas to talk about. And so I think that it divides up perfectly into four a piece. And so um, to keep this rolling, we'll just keep doing it alphabetically and we'll let Abraham go. So I am going to um, share my screen here. Yes. Are you able to see the screen? I can. If so, take it away. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and start off this PowerPoint. Um, and the first thing is, did y'all know that there are more than 300 undergraduate subjects and over a thousand classes that you could take here at the University of Oregon? Um, so the next slide, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the few majors and minors. Uh, so starting off is our architecture program. Architecture is about learning to make physical challenges to our surroundings that enhance the quality of the built environment and our experiences of life. So what does that mean? Um, so some of the bullet points that we have on here are healthy built environments, uh, sustainable, resilient design, housing and urban design, design processes and theory, art and science of buildings, computational design, and lighting and lighting design. Um, so down here at the bottom right corner, we have a quote that says, a successful person is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at them. And that's by David Brinkley. Um, so our next one is going to be art. Uh, so some of the concentrations that we have for our art department is ceramics, fibers, jewelry, and metal, metal smithing, painting and drawing, photography, printmaking, and sculpture. Um, and then the bottom quote that we have is, success means having the courage, the determination, and the will to become the person you believe you were meant to be. 
Um, and then we also have art and technology. Uh, led by internationally known faculty members, the art and technology programs offer classes in video art, game art, animation, installation, imaging, programming, design, and interactivity. Hey, y'all, I can take it over from here. Um, so another subject we go or have at the university is biology, where you can concentrate in ecology and evolution, human biology, marine biology, molecular, cellular, and developmental biology, neuroscience, and behavior. And um, if you look on the right here, do y'all know like what the first cloned animal is? And if you don't, it's this little fish right here called the zebrafish that was actually um, cloned at the University of Oregon. So that's a really fun fact to know that it was not a sheep. Um, and the little quote we have here is, young people willing to push for success super hard to make something happen are among the most powerful forces in the world. Uh, can we go next? Okay, and this is where uh, my my home on campus is, which is business administration at the Lundquist College of Business. So as a business administration major, you can concentrate in entrepreneurship, finance, marketing, operations, and business analytics, and sports business, as well as the Lundquist College of Business um, offers accounting and finance as well. And we also have cinema studies. The top occupations for cinema studies graduates are producers, production workers, editors, graphic designers, audio and video technicians, and film video editor. Um, I have a couple of friends in the cinema studies major and they have the time of their lives just filming whatever they wanna film as their whole work. So if you guys like filming, this is totally a major you could do. And climate studies as a minor. Uh, the minor provides an understanding the science and understanding the scientific principles that drive climate change, natural and human causes of climate change, and possibilities for climate action. All right, I'm Kelsey, and I'm going to take over for now. Um, so we also have a comics and cartoon studies minor. So what is this, you may ask? Comic studies is a new academic discipline built around the history, interpretation, and appreciation of comics, cartoons, and graphic novels. A minor in comics and cartoon studies gives students a strong foundation for work in an industry worth more than seven billion a year. Paired with a wide range of majors, the minor prepares students for jobs in production, writing, marketing, social media, editing, designing, and more. This is definitely something that I would look into because growing up, comics and cartoons was definitely something that I was really interested in. All right, and then we have dance, which is a second home to me because I'm a dancer. And so your curriculum here will include coursework in dance history, improvisation, composition, and ped um, pedag pedagogy. The performance curriculum has a modern dance emphasis with a strong supporting area in ballet. You can also take studio courses offered from beginning to advanced levels in a variety of other idioms, including jazz, tap, hip hop, African, ballroom, tango, swing, improvisation, and contact improvisation. Um, and we also have a bunch of health career fields, such as athletic training, dentistry, medical technology, medicine, nursing, occupational therapy, optometry, oriental medicine, pharmacy, physical therapy, a physician assistant, podiatry, public health, um, naturopathic medicine, veterinary medicine. And you can also major in many different subjects and still enter graduate school for these health careers. All right, and then we also have an indigenous race and ethnic studies, which looks at the way that race is tied to many other issues, including gender, class, sexuality, migration, ingenuity, and colonization. Um, career opportunities in the IRES majors pursue careers such as social justice organizations, tribal leadership, management, social services, education and training, and administration support. 
And so something to keep in mind is that success isn't about how much money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives from Michelle Obama. So I can take over the last four here. Uh, so journalism is also a really popular major here at the U of O. And so many of the graduates here work in digital and multimedia fields that range all the way from documentary filmmaking to visual storytelling. And you can do this entire range um, when you join the major. So a little quote at the bottom here says, success doesn't come to you, you've got to go to it by Marva Collins. Uh, another major that we offer is music technology and some of the courses that go along with this include electronic composition and interactive media performance, sensormatic, musical performance networks, performance with data driven instruments, digital audio and sound design, and the history of electroacoustic acoustic music. And the quote at the bottom here says success means having the courage, the determination and the will to become the person you believe you were meant to be. And let, next we have theater arts, which is another popular major. So here you get the opportunity to become an actor, a stage manager, a costume or stage designer, a theater technician, or a technical director. Um, but if you're not really interested in that, you can also use marketing and educational outreach um, with the skills that you learn through the theater arts major. You can even um, apply all of these skills in other areas such as like health, health and environmental and cultural issues. Theater arts will help you develop valuable skills such as public speaking, collaborative problem solving, and critical thinking. And lastly here, we have Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. The major is, uh, explores gender and sexuality in all areas of life, which include political, cultural, economic, and bodily dimensions. Uh, the major also pursues careers in academia, healthcare, human rights advocacy, journalism, research and development, equity and inclusion, and law and policy. So it's a really important major that encompasses so much of our world. And at the bottom, we have a quote by Oprah Winfrey that says, you get in life what you have the courage to ask for. I thank all of you for uh, sharing uh, those slides with our students. And again, we just want you to um, have an introduction to just some of the many cool things that you can study. But as we mentioned earlier, there are over 300 majors at the University of Oregon. And so you can go on the um, website and just put in majors and minors and you can learn about some of the other really cool areas um, that you can study. Uh, even when I started working here, I had no idea that there were so many different things that uh, you could study that definitely were not a thing you could study when I was in college. Um, I've heard about things like um, uh, cultural anthropology, uh, so many things in the School of Music and Dance, so many different areas in business and journalism. So things that you may be thinking about areas, uh, but just didn't know that there are so many opportunities. And as Rosa mentioned earlier, there are things you can minor in just to explore what you might be interested in. Uh, so we're a little, again, we're running a little bit ahead of the game here. So I'm so happy that our student ambassadors are with us and we will be having one more join us in just a little while. But um, I'm gonna ask uh, our ambassadors um, these slides that we just showed, if any of you, uh, I know Kelsey just mentioned that dance is a passion of hers, but if any of you have any experience with any of these areas that we've just talked about today, or even uh, want to share a little bit more about your majors and things that students might not know that they could um, study, um, I would welcome uh, those remarks right now. So if anyone has anything that they would like to uh, add about Things that you can study, things that you are studying, um, please feel free just to come on back and join us now. Um, I did want to talk briefly about the neuroscience and behavior concentration of biology. It is a new major that was added, I think, in the fall. And um, I'm a psychology major, and neuroscience has always really been super interesting to me. But when I entered, that wasn't an option as a major. So I have been considered changing. Uh, I have been considering changing my major to it, um, but it's pretty amazing just given all of the resources that are given at the university, especially for research in neuroscience. Um, it'll, I mean, I'm just, I'm really excited about it. And I think you should be too, if you're interested at all. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Yeah, Andrew. I was going to say what uh, Kelsey said earlier about the comics books class and the comic book minor. I've actually taken a class in comics 
And that is probably my favorite class on campus. It's just like introduction to comics. And you just learn so much about like different little things you didn't know. And also it counts as an English credit, which means that if you aren't the best at reading and writing, then you, comics is definitely the way to go. If you like pictures and like reading pictures, um, it's super like deep and like, I don't know, I really like that class and it's probably my favorite class on campus. So if you do come to the University of Oregon in the future, I definitely give it a try. Thank you, Ethan. And folks probably don't know that there's actually jobs out there. And you know, some people might think, okay, what can I do if I came and took those kind of classes? But you'd be surprised um, the kinds of careers that our students end up in after having uh, majored and minored in some of the areas that you might not even think. I know a lot of people, when you talk about the arts, um, some parents might be concerned of, oh, if you major in art, what kind of job are you gonna get? But you'd be really surprised that you can get jobs in in banking and industry and in the corporate world because they're looking for people with that kind of mindset and that kind of creativity and marketing and there's so many careers. So we always try to emphasize, come in and find out what you're passionate about and that's what you're gonna be really good at. And you can make a career out of it. Anyone else like to add anything about their major or any of the um, majors that we've talked about today? Okay, so I'm going to ask our ambassadors to, um, and you can actually just uh, come back online and they'll be able to see you as you're speaking. But uh, one of the questions I always like to ask is, um, when you came to college, what is one thing you wish you had known before you came to college? And I'm just going to keep going uh, alphabetically here and see if Abraham would like to join in. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing I would have wished I knew before coming into college was that um, professors, or let me rephrase this. Um, the one thing I wish I would have known coming into college was uh, being able to manage my time a lot better. Um, as a high school student, you know, you have a you have a set schedule um, going into class at like 7.30 a.m., getting out like at three, maybe four in the afternoon, and then doing that over again for five days in a week. Um, in college, it's not the same. You have to really plan out your schedule. Maybe you want to work while you're in college or you have other obligations that you might have. Um, you know, really being able to set, um, I guess, boundaries for yourself as to when you're able to do something and when you're not able to do it. Um, and really being able to focus on what's important and what's at hand. Um, so that was like one of the biggest things that I wish I would have been able to understand as a high schooler um, and then coming into undergrad. Thank you. That's a great tip and being that um, you can start in middle school, getting organized, learning how to manage your time. And there's all kinds of tips out there, especially now in this age of virtual learning and finding that online, there are so many tips for getting yourself organized and, and how to study. Um, it's funny that we find so many students come to college and they don't know how to study. And um, that actually is a skill. And we actually do have a place on campus that will help you um, with your study skills. It's called uh, TAEC, Teaching and Engagement Center. I hope I have that right. But you can actually uh, get a workshop on how to study and how to study for different um, courses because how you study for science might be different from how you study for math or writing. So again, another one of those uh, resources that you need to find out about. Um, how about Ethan, do you have any comments on about what you wish you had known before you came to college? Yeah, I do. Um, I'd say that's the one thing I wish I knew before coming to college and even in college still is that um, you should sign up for as many scholarships as possible. Everyone loves free money and there are millions of scholarships, which also means millions of dollars just being lended to you for free or being handed to you for free. Um, I know that it could be hard sometimes to get the money, but there are like many different ways um, through financial aid, through scholarships that you can get all this free money and all you have to do really is sign up and write a 500 word um, pair, like essay for 
five thousand dollars and it's just that simple uh and being able to get free money just thrown at you and even now i'm still looking for more scholarships to sign up for just because who doesn't love the free money that is wonderful advice even thank you and what i'd like middle school students to know is that it's never too early to start looking for scholarships there are actually scholarships out there that you can start applying for maybe even as early as um, eighth or ninth grade and some scholarship can be held for you but even if you can't apply for them yet it's really good to start doing that research learning how to find the reputable um, websites and start practicing your writing and looking at the kind of questions they're going to ask you and making sure that you know how to tell your story if you are if writing is not your best thing then make sure you connect with someone that can help you with your writing um, because competition is stiff but as you can say there are lots of scholarships out there and the fun thing i like everyone to know is that there are scholarships out there for everything and everyone um, people tend to think of you know just uh, mainstream scholarships but there are certain scholarships for um, interest-based scholarships so if you're interested in painting or, or gardening or um, motorcycles or um, there are um, identity-based scholarships out there. So I say research them all. One of the favorite things I like to share is that one of our colleagues uh, in financial aid got a scholarship, uh, $5,000 for being tall from the uh, Tall Women of America. So just know that there are scholarships for left-handed people, people who like the color purple. Um, if you want to know you want to major in psychology or anthropology or just research those scholarships and start practicing now. And another thing I like to make sure that you know is start keeping a journal. If you aren't already doing that, keep a journal. Because by the time you get to be a junior in high school and you're starting to apply for those scholarships, you won't remember all the great things you've done. And so start keeping a journal of your clubs, your extracurricular activities, if you're helping out at home, if you've been a part of any um, school programs or college prep programs, make a note of all those things. If you volunteer in your neighborhood or you uh, work with um, food organizations, make a note of those things now because you'll need to be able to report those things later. And colleges don't just wanna see that you have good grades. They wanna see that you are a well-rounded person and that you have an involvement in your community. So my best advice is if you aren't already keeping a journal, start doing that now so that you can show that you are a well-rounded person and that you are committed to your success and the success of others. Um, how about Kessie? Would you like to add anything about uh, what you wish you had known? Yes, definitely. Um, one thing that I wish I had known coming into college is that college really isn't as scary as you think it is. I know um, when I was in middle school and high school, I would always hear things about how college professors are really scary, how it's like just the environment is a lot harder and a lot more difficult than what you're used to in high school and middle school. However, what I've learned, at least at the University of Oregon, is that professors and staff really care about your well being and they really wish the best for your academic success. So coming in, I wish that I had known that I can really just go up to any professor, ask them any questions that I have, any administration staff, and that everyone's really welcoming and really friendly and just want what's best for you. And I think if I had known this, I would have definitely not been as timid coming in and I would have been more um, like excited for my education. And I know that oftentimes adults um, will always use, oh, but you need to prepare so much for college as like, a way to scare you into doing better when you're um, young. However, just know that um, the people here do really care for your success. So you don't have to be afraid. I would come in um, open-minded and expecting to have a lot of fun and learning a lot of amazing things that you'll learn through your professors. Thank you so much, Kelsey. I appreciate that. And Sarita, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, of course. Um, I think that one of the most valuable things that you can get out of college is really strong re relationships and connections with your professors. So I think something that I wish I had known is 
uh, the importance of going to office hours for every single professor, even if you don't have questions, just sitting in there and, and learning from them because they want to interact with their students. And there's so much that you can learn from a professor just from having conversations with them about the topic, even if it's not necessarily 100% related to what's going on in the classroom. Um, it's, it's really valuable. And those are connections that you will use and remember for the rest of your life. Thank you. That's really good advice. I appreciate that. Well, Emily has just joined us. I think she had class this morning. And so Emily, if you would come on and uh, just introduce yourself, um, who you are, what your major is, what year you are, where you're from. And then we were answering the question, what is one thing you wish you had known before you came to college? Yeah, hi, I'm Emily. I'm a graduating senior. I'm majoring in English with a minor in creative writing. Um, and I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. So yeah, not too far. Um, one thing I wish I'd known was probably just like how many options I had. Because when I came in here, I was nervous that I wouldn't find my footing or that I wouldn't find anything that spoke to me. But as soon as I came here, I was a part of like, so many clubs and so many organizations because there was just like such a wide variety of options available for me. Um, and, may, and if I'd known that beforehand, I think it would have made the college experience, like going into college, a little bit more, um, a little less scary. Like I, I definitely would have felt a little bit more at home just from the jump instead of like feeling that I had to walk into it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And could you um, share with us a little bit about your major? what, you, yeah, uh, what so, you've been able to do and what you would like to do with that afterwards. Um, yeah, an English degree is one of those things that's so open-ended that it's almost like, well, what can't I do? So um, for me, I want to teach. So I um, specifically want to teach about um, African-American literature. So my concentration has been in that. So I've been able to take classes in that um, genre. I've been able to do research, which is something that I'm so grateful for. Um, I'm a part of the McNair Scholars Program, and I was able to use um, my English classes and courses as well as on my own. I was able to do some research um, independently, and I get to present at symposiums with my research, and it'll also help me for when I transition to grad school and um, want to explore that topic even deeper. Thank you. And I will say, while I have you here, um, what is one of the best things or coolest thing that you've been able to study, maybe in your major or just something else you've decided to um, take advantage of? What is one of the coolest things you've been able to study or learn or experience? Yeah, I took, um, in my freshman year, I took an environmental studies class. And I was so scared because at first I thought I was gonna be strictly science and I am definitely about the books and literature and that's just kind of where I'm at. But I took it and I learned so much and it was one of the most um, enriching classes I took at the UO. And it was something that was completely outside my major and outside my comfort zone. And the professor I took it with met me in the middle. So she helped me incorporate things that I'd known from like literature into the course. So it was made it sort of like a fusion between environmental studies and English. So I was able to write papers in a form that I understood, but also learn information that I otherwise would have never even explored. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's what we want students to know that you can explore so many things and you can major in what you are passionate about and still enter so many different career fields. Um, people think that, you know, you can only do one thing if you want to major in English. I think we brought this up earlier, but, you know, I've been told that banks and industry and corporations, they're looking for people who are really good at writing and really creative. And so you can enter any number of fields. Um, researchers are looking for people who know how to write because they can help them write their research because they may be able to do the research, but they're not the best at expressing themselves or getting the communications out. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, one of the things, oh, let's, well, let's just keep on also with, um, as we're on the idea of majors, um, Abraham, would you like to share a little bit about uh, what is one of the coolest things you've been able to either study or experience 
or do either in your major or not your major? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I am majoring in Spanish. Um, specifically, the concentration is uh, literature and culture. So what's really interesting about that concentration in Spanish is that um, I come from a very rural area where there's a lot of Latinos and minorities in the area. So uh, what I've been able to do is volunteer with uh, nonprofit organizations back home uh, to be able to connect with these uh, different families, to be able to get them resources that they might need, um, whether it be help for school, uh, maybe their low income, um, stuff like that. Just being able to get hands-on um, experience um, has been a really great opportunity for me. Uh, it's been very eye-opening uh, coming from also my background as a Latino. Um, and, you know, there's just so many things that every single major can offer for you. It doesn't just have to be uh, within the arts, but within the science programs as well. There's so many hands-on opportunities um, that, you know, um, I should have taken more advantage of to be able to, uh, you know, gain that experience. But now that, you know, I'm graduating, I'm glad that I did when I did. Um, but, you know, it's just uh, really eye-opening to be able to see these different communities from where I'm from um, and to be able to, um, communicate with them as well as like grow alongside with them um, has, has been really awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Ethan. Uh, Barbara, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, so what is one of the, um, you know, coolest things you've been able to study or experience uh, since coming to college, be it in your major or just another area? Yeah, um, I'd say the coolest thing that I got to study is definitely computer information technology, which is my minor. Um, being a business major, people say that it's good to have a computer background a little bit. Um, so I tried taking the courses and I absolutely loved making websites, doing like um, like behind the scenes of the websites and how everything works. And it's just super cool because at the end of like, even the introductory classes at the end of the class, you really get a good concept of like how to build your own website. Like I have dozens of websites that I've created so far and it's just really nice and rewarding to see like all the work you put in and it like gives you an actual outcome. So I definitely think that computer information science or technology is super useful as well as the current class I'm taking right now. We're just learning about how to become not like super, but like how to become a hacker or how to defend from hackers. And there's like these cool little things that you don't even think about that you could become. And it's just super rewarding knowing that um, the classes I'm taking like are revolved around my everyday life. Like I'm always going to be on a website every day and I'm always going to be in fear of getting hacked or something of that nature. So it's really nice uh, having that experience from taking these classes. Well, it sounds like you have really uh, taken advantage of a wide range of things. You mentioned the cartooning earlier and now computer information sciences. And uh, yeah, I may be reaching out to you about that, how to keep from getting hacked thing because <laughs> yeah. um, I, I tell I people I have tech gremlins so things happen. I definitely like all the classes I've taken at the U of O have been fun. Like although classes may be stressful, at the end of the day, you're really getting whatever you put in. And all I, like every single class I've had has been like an amazing experience and a lot of fun to take um, and just really put it into my everyday life. Like even if you think about comics, you don't think about it in your everyday life. But then I think about it like when I was a kid or if I were to read a comic now and I look at like how the author put this exact picture at this exact way. And it's just super interesting that I could use all the things I've learned every day. That's awesome. Are there other classes that you've taken that people might not even know existed or things you didn't even know existed when you first came? Um, what other classes have I taken? I think the most recent class that I've taken that is like a little bit different is I've taken an anthropology class that was on uh, like scientific racism and um, oh, science and race and it just tells you like the little like the actual history about what's going on in our everyday lives I know it's a super big topic right now and just being able to take a class like that and really like talk and discuss with other classmates on like 
what really transcribed all of this. Uh, I think that's super like nice to have that the, the university provides is just like a class where you are learning about everyday problems. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, the more I learn from students about classes that are available, it makes me start wanting to go back to school and audit some classes because uh, we seem to have some uh, fantastic opportunities. Um, Kelsey, would you like to share um, one of the either coolest experiences or classes you've taken or just anything since you've been at the UL? Yeah, of course. Um, so one of my, I, oh, sorry, just to um, review, I'm a psychology major. And so I've taken a bunch of psychology classes during my time at the University of Oregon. However, one of my favorites is a class I took last term called developmental psychology. And in this class, um, we learn about how genetics and your environment shapes um, who you are as you grow up and just how development works in different stages. And something really cool that we got to do is um, participate in a simulation where we got to raise um, a child. So if you're ever plan planning on having kids, um, you got to make lifestyle choices and how you would want to raise your baby. And so from the age of zero all the way to um, their adulthood, you get to make decisions and see how those decisions affect um, your child and how they develop. And so that was definitely really cool to learn about because like I'm currently 20, I'm not really thinking about having kids um, at this moment. Um, however, in the future, um, some of these things that I learned will definitely apply to the way that I want to um, like make decisions about my life. And then a second part of the simulation is that I got to choose um, and make decisions for myself after um, like same as the kid where I would grow up from um, adolescence all the way to um, like an old age. And so I got to make these life choices, like what career I would go into, um, like my family, my friends, and then how I would want to um, like spread my time around. And I got to make these decisions about how I would prioritize my time and spending time with my family or focus on my work or friends. And just, it was an amazing experience to really get to think about these things because when you're living your day-to-day -day life, you don't really um, like, Think about the future that much I think at least for me and so it was definitely just really um, cool and an eye-opening experience to be able to be part of a simulation where we really in-depth um, thought about these things so yeah I would definitely if you're ever interested in psychology I would recommend that class but also also like every other class that I've taken in psychology have been really interesting because I think um, something that sets apart my professors for me is that they're really um, they're really passionate about what they teach and they're really passionate about their research. So there's a lot that I can take away from them and learn from them. Wow, thank you, uh, Kelsey. That definitely falls in, for me, the category of who knew that you could study something like that. Uh, it reminds me of a class that I took, I had to take when I was in high school. They had a class where you had to um, have a baby and buy a house and plan meals and I, you know, I didn't think they did things like that anymore. So to prepare you for the real world. So that's pretty cool. All right, thank you. Sarita, would you like to um, share? Yeah, of course. So um, kind of in the same vein as Kelsey, I'm also a psychology student. And um, part of our curriculum is through our introductory site classes, we have to participate in research that is done on campus, but um, it's the research that is being conducted by graduate students. And so some of my favorite experiences, best memories from being on campus is getting to go to these amazing labs where people that are not much older than me are conducting their own research um, in various fields. So some of the Research, research that I participated in um, involved taking brain scans of my own brain and um, while looking at photos of people's faces while they analyzed um, how different things influenced how I perceived people. And there's a million other other projects going on right now that are conducted by people that are super young. And it's amazing to be in a school where you kind of feel you have that autonomy that there's no you know faculty that always on you no, no one has to hold your hand the entire way through you really get independence and in what you want to study and what you want to pursue 
And um, for these site courses, even if you aren't interested in psychology, um, these classes are non-major specific. So you can take these intro classes just to see what they're like and just to participate in these studies and, and see what cool things are going on on campus. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I remember taking some high school students on a tour of the brain lab. And um, that was actually pretty fascinating, even for me. I had no idea some of the things, the experiments and research that's going on on the campus. So, and I'm fascinated by the brain. So thank you. Um, Emily, um, we'll come back to you. Is there um, one um, really cool experience or something you've been able to do? I may have asked yeah. you. <laughs> kind of, uh, but I have so many, it's fine. Um, I think for me was, um, there was an African cinema class I was taking and I had never taken any cinema class before. So I felt kind of scared because I didn't know like all the terminology and I just wanted to take it because I'm African and I wanted to learn more about like cinema from other parts of the continent. And I got to watch films in languages I had never heard of even. And just like, it exposed me to such a wide variety. Um, and then from there, I was introduced to, there was an African dance club and I was able to watch the performances and all the ways that like, like African theater and African arts were on campus. And I thought that was just something that if I had not taken that class, I would have never have known about. And it involved me even deeper into a part of uh, my culture on campus and introduced me to some people that um, are still a part of my everyday life today. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, I think what you all are an example of just some of the, the just the wide variety of experiences um, that everyone can have. Um, another question I would have, and I'm going to, I'm not gonna do this alphabetically, but I'll let you think about it and whoever wants to chime in first. But I'm wondering um, about a challenge you may have faced uh, when you first got to campus and how you, found your resources to help you with the challenge. Anyone have a thought on that? Anyone have challenges? Or a challenge that maybe that you've heard other students uh, when you've done your tours, when you hear about students talking about their challenges and how you find a resource. Carita? Um, yeah, so I can go first. Um, for During my freshman year of college, I experienced um, a pretty big death in my family, and I didn't really know how to handle it. I was pretty far from home, and um, it didn't, it felt, it felt really scary, but um, I managed to find resources on campus. So I started with going to the Duck Nest, which is um, a really like nice, um, kind of like, a, it's like a hangout spot, I would call it, on campus where it's just, it's calm. And if you want study time there, you can go there. You need like a mental health break, you can go. Um, but I realized that wasn't really what I needed at the time. It was, um, I just needed like real help. <laughs> so um, I talked to the people at the Duck Nest and they sent me to the counseling center where um, where I was able to get um, within 15 minutes of arriving there, I got to talk to like a licensed therapist and I was able to go back every single week. And um, the great thing about that place is that all of it is free. It's paid for through your tuition and um, you get to talk to licensed therapists whenever you want. Um, the environment there is amazing and the staff is like incredibly helpful and really, really help. Like I can't even express how much they helped me and um, how grateful I am that that resource is on campus, especially because going home wasn't really an option at the time. So um, I definitely needed that. That on campus. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else have any um, insights on if someone is struggling with something where you can go for resources? Okay. Um, is Teresa still here? Yes, I am. Okay. Teresa, would you like to share with students um, about um, maybe some of the, either a resource that you have found or maybe even this in the CMAE, what resources we offer? Yeah. Um, a resource that I have found. 
Definitely the counseling center. Um, that I haven't taken advantage of that as much as I should have, um, especially since it's in incorporated into your tuition. Um, CMA offers uh, lend the lending library um, that, that helps out a lot with textbooks because they can let you borrow some for the term. Um, they also can let you borrow if you don't have access to a laptop. Um, they always have snacks when we're in person. So it's always nice to just go put your backpack down, sit down and just like relax, chit chat with like the staff or um, sometimes like me and my friends would just go hang out there. Um, so it's a very chill place to hang out and then um, talk to, I feel like the staff help a lot and then they're always like relating to your uh, personal life and it's not just advising the relationships that I have with the staff. Um, and then what's the other thing? Um, oh, uh, sorry? Tutoring? Oh, yes. And they also have tutoring and the two, it, it's nice because the tutoring is pool is like smaller because it's, uh, it's only like CMA students that usually know about it. So you get more one on one help um, than other tutoring uh, spots that I usually go to. But um, it's also very um, diverse um, place. So when I couldn't find like a community that I felt like I was welcomed into like I just go to see May and then they they always have something to like equivalent to it um, that makes me feel comfortable or they work to make something comfortable for you. Um, a good resource on campus just to like stay active within like uh, the college life I think is the MCC uh, the Multicultural Center um, it's in the EMU um, that's where all like the student unions um, are located. Um, so it's cool. They have like this big calendar on the wall that you can like see all these different events happening from um, the International Student Association. Um, I think they have like, they would have coffee hours every week that they would have, you could go hang out and just talk to international students and like other students that aren't international um, and have a have a meal and then just chit chat with them get to know different perspectives um, there's also like you could see when there's like dances put on by um, different student organizations so um, like Mecha they would put on a party they put party of color last year so it was like a, it was a, ba a baile or a dance that was mainly uh, for like it was focused on Latino music or reggaeton um and yeah so definitely check out the mcc is a good resource to like uh connect with the social life of campus thank you Jessica. and that's a that's a great segue into my next question so um just wondering uh, i know you all are busy students and for our multicultural ambassadors you also have your jobs but just wondering what kinds of things uh, might you participate in as an extracurricular activity? Are you part of any clubs or organizations or um, have you had a chance to do uh, internships outside of campus? Um, would anyone like to um, give a little feedback on that? Yeah, so um, I really enjoy doing physical activities. So. Uh, I've been part of our Webfoot CrossFit club or organization for the past three years. It's been a really good uh, resource for me to kind of relieve stress whenever I'm stressed or uh, I'm just looking for, you know, um, community time with people that enjoy doing the same thing as I do. Um, so that's been something that I've been involved in for the past couple of years. Uh, it's been really great. I've met a lot of um really amazing people, individuals, and even the coaches um, have been extremely helpful with, you know, recovery or uh, maybe injuries that we've had, but it's been, it's been pretty great for me, um, building that community and also being a part of something bigger than, you know, just one individual, but being able to help out others as well. Um, and then apart from that, I also um, like tutor on the side for, for my major. Um, so I'm not associated with the department or anything, but any uh, classmate that I have that might need some extra help, I'm always willing to help them as well. Um, but those are like some things that I'm involved in. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any of our other student um, panel that has shared any extracurricular activities? 
Um, yes, I'd love to share a little bit about my experiences with student organizations on campus. Um, I'm currently involved with the Hong Kong Student Association. Um, my family is originally from Hong Kong, so I have a really strong connection with my culture. Um, we're currently organizing our cultural night, which is something that we, uh, which is what a lot of cultural organizations on campus um, host every year. And so this is basically a night where we um, get to showcase our culture. Um, we have a lot of performances lined up. Um, we have our own dance team, which I'm coaching currently. Um, we invite other student organizations student organizations such as Duck Street Dance Club, um, which I'm also a part of, um, to perform um, various singers, various, um, just various performers. And it's a really fun event where people get free food, um, they get to watch performances and then participate in raffles and games as well. So it's really cool. And um, one of my favorite times of the year when we get to go around to other um, student organizations and watch um, all of their performances and culture nights, as well as going to their general meetings. That's one thing um, that I love being a part of because there's so many different cultures on campus because University of Oregon um, has a lot of diverse cultures. So getting to go around and seeing what um, other students are passionate about is a really amazing experience. And recently, um, because we've been online most of the term for COVID safety, um, we've been able to build a really strong connection with schools other than University of Oregon. So tonight is actually um, Portland State University um, culture night for their Hong Kong Student Association. So some of our members are going to go um, and attend their Zoom meetings so that we can support um, other organizations. So it's definitely really cool to be a part of an organization that's um, prevalent in other schools as well. So you can build connections not only in your own university, but also with other schools. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kelsey. Uh, have any of other our student panel been able to um, had time to do anything extracurricular? Yeah, uh, kind of going off of what Kelsey said. So I'm actually the public relations for the Vietnamese Student Association. And we, Kelsey basically went over like what they didn't, uh, the Hong Kong Student Association. Uh, we do the same in Vietnamese Student Association. We're also having our culture show. Um, and if you, and we also like bring in special guests every year. So if you've ever watched MasterChef, we are bringing in like some cool things that we do is that we're bringing in Christine Ha, who has won MasterChef before, and she's a Vietnamese American uh, chef. So that's super cool. We're bringing in some like YouTube uh, stars that are have Vietnamese backgrounds. So that's super cool. Um, and just like some other notable names that some of the organizations in the multicultural community center have brought in is like Arden Cho and like just all these other YouTubers like Jeremy Passion if you know who that is um, and that's just super cool uh, and again we all support each other so I know many people from the Vietnamese Student Association will definitely be going to uh, Kelsey's Hong Kong Student Association's Culture Night and I can bet that a lot of people from Hong Kong Student Association is going to come to Vietnamese Student Association's uh, culture night. So we're all just one big community that like likes to hang out with each other and support each other and whatever our endeavors are. Um, and we just build a big community on the University of Oregon campus to feel comfortable. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think the theme here is that if there's something you're interested in, or if it's around your hobbies or your identities, there is an opportunity to take advantage of something on campus. Uh, did anyone uh, of the rest of our ambassadors have uh, any extracurriculars to share? Rita? Yeah, um, I'm a part of an on-campus magazine called Align. I'm a photographer for them. And even remotely, because I'm not even in Eugene right now, um, they've worked to help make sure that everyone's still included and everyone's still participating in the magazine. So I've been doing shoots from my house um, with my one friend that I've been quarantining with for the past year. And um, and I've been submitting them. And we've been setting, making our publications. And it's been amazing. And we get access to a bunch of the facilities in the journalism department. So we have access to studios and um, we can use all of their equipment, um, obviously with permission, but um, but it's really fun and, and it's really flexible. So anyone can do it. Anyone can make time for it. It's really cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see. Was there anyone else that wanted to share um, from our ambassadors about uh, 
any extracurriculars? Uh, I've been enjoying doing a lot of uh, photography with students. So kind of uh, taking a moment to uh, equip artists with all the tools that they need to um, do some of their own photo shooting. So getting them all the lighting that they need, uh, showing them a quick way around the camera, and then giving them an opportunity to just sort of create what they want. Thank you. And, and we have had we have uh, new panelists joining us from the School of Journalism, and you'll be hearing from them in just a little bit. Uh, Emily, were you going to add something? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a part of the English Honor Society here on campus, Sigma Tau Delta. Uh, and it's really great because it's an international um, organization. So there's chapters in um, universities across the country. And every year we have like trips where you go to a convention center and you meet with everyone else, internet, like all the international chapters. And it's great because you get to submit some of your work. Um, I had a paper submitted or accepted to there and I was uh, going to present it, it was last year in Las Vegas, um, but it got canceled due to COVID, but we still had a virtual one this year. And it's something that's been going on for like at least a hundred years, I think. It's something really crazy like that. Um, and it's great that I'm a, I like to be a part of it because I get to meet with other English majors and you know geek out about books with them and not annoy my roommate with it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and as we um, um, got a couple minutes left here for our, our student ambassador panel, um, and this is for any of you, is there just one thing um, uh, last thing that you would like to share with our middle school students, one thing that you would like them to know. And I'll let anyone pop in that might want to just share some final words of wisdom for our middle school students. Uh, I would say it is okay to not know where you're going to go. I spent a lot of time being worried, um, feeling like everyone around me was so sure about what they were going to do. Like, wow, you get your life planned until you're 70. Um, but it's really okay to feel unsure about the future. As long as you do something and find something that you enjoy, you're going to be okay. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Um, I kind of just want to reiterate what we said earlier about there's three different uh, major, 300 different majors and really like it's okay to not know what you want to do right now in high school, even in college. I know a lot of people are undecided second years, third years. And um, I just want you to know that like there's a major and there's something for you to do always. Um, and yeah, just don't be afraid to like come in undecided or come in not totally knowing what you're doing because that's all part of the experience really. Uh, just figuring out these different things you want to take like personally, like what I said earlier, like computer science was definitely not in my realm at all. And I just tried it out um, and I ended up loving it. So really just try different things. It's okay to not know what you want to do and like have an exact plan, uh, but yeah, just do you. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate all of you. And so we have had our um, multicultural uh, uh, excuse me, multicultural recruiters from the UO orientation programs join us today. And I really appreciate all of your input and your wisdom and sharing your experiences as students. And so the overall theme here today is that we want you all to know that you can go to college. There are great resources for you. There are a lot of opportunities and that you should um, take advantage of every opportunity, I think, is what we've been hearing today from our student panel. So we thank you uh, all for participating today. And you are welcome just to hang here with us for a while, if you like. But thank you again for being with us and sharing with our students today. Up next, we are going to hear from um, students from our School of Journalism. And I believe we will also be having a faculty member join us in just a little while, but we're going to get this started by um, asking you to introduce yourselves and just tell us um, who you are, uh, what your major is, what year you are, and uh, where you're from. We'll, we'll start off with that. And so 
I see Mohammed. Well, hi. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Um, I am from Saudi Arabia. I am an international student at, at University of Oregon. I'm a journalism major, senior. I but I will graduate in the fall. Um, so yeah, that's me. Thank you. And Aaron. I I hope I didn't step on anyone's toes. No, by, uh, it was great information. Thank you. Oh, good. All right. Um, well, hi, my name is Aaron. I am a junior at the U of O. I am also a journalism student. Um, I am focusing on documentary filmmaking and video production. That is uh, what I enjoy a lot and hopefully what I get to have a career in. Um, I'm from Eugene here. I've lived here for uh, a very long time. Uh, it's really nice to be here in a gorgeous and, and really vegetated place uh, and be near my family. Yeah, so I really like being here and being at the U of O. Thank you. And Jazzy. Hello, I'm Jazzy. Um, I'm a junior as well. Um, I'm from the East Bay, California, but I live here now in Eugene and I love it. Um, I've done a lot of different things at the U of O. I first started out um, in Duck TV and um, worked my way working at KVAL as a production assistant, um, kind of behind the scenes there. And then I kind of shift gears and um, I'm now a multimedia director. I've been a multimedia director at Ethos Magazine for about two years. So I've been doing a lot of print work and some documentary filmmaking like Aaron. Um, yeah, just excited to be here. Thank you. Appreciate you all joining us. So, and so I know you have some things that you're going to share with us today, but I, I would go ahead and uh, uh, like to ask you another question here because um, we get a lot of students who they hear about majoring in journalism and the majority of people think, okay, that's about um, either writing for the newspaper or perhaps broadcasting on TV but they usually aren't aware of just all the different things you can do um, that come into the School of Journalism, different concentrations. Um, could you all share a, a little bit more about your concentrations and maybe even other areas? Because I think you all are dealing with maybe digital media, which uh, I'm gonna be excited for our students to even learn what that is, but are you familiar with other things that are also in the School of Journalism? Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm uh, pretty, um, aware of like the radio, um, there's like the radio station on campus as well. And there's also, um, you know, within the whole world of journalism, there's advertising as well, where, you know, you learn how to shoot commercials and behind the scenes stuff like that, and how to use strategies on how to, um, you know, execute certain advertisements correctly. Um, you know, and there's also a design factor, um, you know, how to design certain things. Um, journalism is so huge and which also makes it such a great field because you can really dapple your toe in everything and really try everything, which is really amazing. Thank you for that. Does anyone else um, have other areas they'd like to add that they might be familiar with? Okay. So the, oh. go, go ahead, Aaron. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated about uh, the SOJC is that the skills you learn there are applicable to so many fields. Um, so you will learn about, you know, uh, the worlds of advertising and PR and journalism and all, you know, all the, the different worlds that branch out from that. But the skills that you take away from the SOJC are pretty amazing. Um, just from being in one of the uh, video classes, uh, it's called uh, Gateway. It's like a big class where they teach you everything that you need to know about audio and video uh, and lighting. I have taken and, and done a lot of um, a contract video work. So that in itself has already found me some pretty fun employment and some really good experience. So even if it's not, you know, like the career that you're looking for, you will walk away with some wonderful skills. Awesome. Yeah, for, for me, when I, before I joined the journalism school, I was majoring in physics, then I switched to journalism. But I was really intimidated because I thought you have to be in the front of the camera and you have to hold the mic. But then I took a few classes and I realized like, no, I could actually just like edit videos or just hold the camera and record something. And when you work in a newsroom or with a creative team, you learn how they do the PR, the, the, the public relations, and how they do the social media campaign, how they create a design. So you might be focused in one thing, but you actually learn so many things in the same time. Thank you so much. So we have been joined by Professor Ed Madison. 
And um, we have just uh, heard a little bit uh, introduction from your great student team here and uh, about their majors and uh, just a little bit of uh, their insights about what is involved or what else you can do in the School of, School of Journalism. But uh, I'm going to let you take it away, Professor Madison. Well, thank you. And you know what? I think I had joined by the wrong link. I was watching, but I didn't see myself. And then I realized, oh, I was I was on the link that everybody's watching. And so uh, excuse me for being tardy. It no, was not my intention. Late perfect. for my own class. Late. <laughs> So yeah, um, so first of all, I reached out to some really outstanding students as you've already seen uh, and had a chance to, to get to know briefly uh, here. Uh, Jazzy, Aaron, and Mohammed are just stellar um, and outstanding. And Barbara had asked me to share a little bit about my own journey. So I actually got started in media and uh, in, in journalism when I was in the seventh or eighth grade. Um, you know, I, I had the good fortune of having a dad who was a journalist and my mom was a teacher and um, we used to have an old eight millimeter movie camera. And when I was really young, I would have my my sister, I, I actually made her sign a contract to be the weather person, you know, and I was like pretending that I was running this TV station, you know, and then, and then another point I had walkie talkies, you probably don't even know what those are, but there are these, well, they still have sort of walkie talkies, right? And I created my own radio station and I was, you know, trying to string wire to the tree to see if I could get the signal to go further and everything else. So media was kind of always in my, in my, in my DNA, you know. Um, and I think the thing that you probably have already heard from the students here uh, this morning is that what's so exciting about it is that it's one of the professions where you're never doing the same thing twice. You're not just sitting behind a desk um, and you get to meet interesting people and tell their stories. Uh, and, um, you know, it's whether you decide to become a photojournalist and, and, you know, take still photography or uh, video journalism or sports or entertainment journalism, there's food journalism. Uh, there's so many different ways to uh, pursue uh, storytelling because that's at the heart of all of it. Um, and so uh, a number of the students today brought some examples of work. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna start with Jazzy's um, uh, website because um, the one thing, um, you know, whether whatever profession you're gonna choose, um, you want people to be able to see your work in terms of what we call like a portfolio. Um, and you want them to, you, you know, you kind of wanna be able to have them find you. Um, so Jazzy, this is, um, let me pull this up here. This is looking, I don't know, do people tell you kind of a little reminiscent of Alicia Keys there? You know, do you ever get that? <laughs> no, but I'm definitely, I'm pulling Alicia Keys Hopefully lately. I'm not doing the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about this site and what, you know, um, what, how did you put this together and why did you put it together? Yeah, so I really wanted to put my site together. Um, I put like a, you know, I cut out um, Photoshop to cut out picture of myself and whatnot, just to kind of make it more personable. I want people to know who I am and kind of connect with me in um, a certain way. Um, and I also um, use like the Angela Davis quote because I'm a huge believer of, you know, my work making a difference. Um, I really am passionate about doing stuff like that. And I attached some photos um, kind of at the bottom, just of some work experience I had. There was me at KBEL changing some lights, which was a lot of fun. Um, and just some print photography um, and stuff that I do, um, which is more, more film, not print photography, uh, more film uh, photography that I do and some short films that I've worked on and me working in duck TV. Um, so just kind of encapsulating who I am as a person. Um, and I also have some portfolios and stuff on there just to make it easier accessible um, for people to see. And I also have just work on there that I enjoy doing like photography on the side and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Great. How did you discover uh, video as a as a passion? I first discovered video as a passion um, when I first came to the SOJC. I was like, I want to be on TV. I want to be a reporter. And um, I got into Duck TV and I started doing video work and you know just shooting B roll. And it made me realize how much I really liked shooting video. Um, and I eventually switched. Um, I kind of mentioned this, I think, earlier, but I worked at KVAL and 
um, some of the stories were kind of just hitting the surface level. And I was also working at um, Ethos Magazine as the multimedia director, producing some uh, longer format videos. Um, and I just realized that I really loved the longer format. Um, it kind of hits um, a little bit deeper when you're talking about storytelling. Um, so I really just appreciated that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron, uh, so you gave a link here to some some various projects that you've done. Um, let me just put this up. Yeah, and can you show the OR Magazine one? I think I can. Hold on a second here. Let me just share the screen. Um, which one? Which one? Where do I go? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, hello, goodbye, I love you, right there. Oh, okay, all right. Hold on. Hello. Oi. Oi. Hi, Mom. Hi, Robin. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi, man. Can I show you some artichokes? We have five kinds of artichokes. This is my bamboo that I got freshman year. And it was like this tall. And now it's this big. Oh my goodness. We have graduated college. Están buenísimas, amigos. Son mis preferidas. This is Hamish. This is Beatrice. That's not what I'm showing you. I'm showing you this. Oh. Love you. Love See you soon. You. Bye bye. Okay, bye. I love, love you. you. <laughs> Aww, that was cute. Bye. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. 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 I saw Jazzy there in the corner. Um, tell folks, uh, and that was really kind of putting a magazine, trying to put, imagine trying to put a magazine together uh, when everybody has just been recently quarantined, uh, you know, because of COVID. Uh, and um, Aaron, I'll let you talk about that project. And Mo, it was great to see you in there too. Uh, it was hard. <laughs> it was, it was tough. Um, we were really, I remember our first meeting being like, okay, guys, uh, let's figure this out. <laughs> it was, we were, we really kind of had to adapt the spirit of like, all right, we're in kind of an entire new world and territory and we're good, you know, we're going to bring our enthusiasm and our creativity and we're just going to do our darndest. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing like that project specifically because I was starting to feel like the disconnection from everybody. I was really, I was missing my family, I was missing my friends and, you know, I, just like everyone in the world, I, I just wanted to see everybody. Um, and I started realizing how well people can connect over Zoom and FaceTime and how that can be really be a wonderful place to show love. And I just wanted to capture some of those moments and share and show that like, we're still here for each other and we're, we're still like together, uh, even though we're pretty far apart. Yeah, so it was, it was I, I want it to be kind of a reflection of like my whole experience and uh, the experience of like, uh, everyone on our team do trying to, you know, stay connected and, and work together. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mo, um, I want to share your portfolio here um, and have you tell us uh, just a little bit more about yourself and some of your work and then we can pick um, maybe one of your videos to look at. Yeah, sure. So about me, as I wrote the, there, a global citizen of this small world, a simple person trying to enjoy this short life. Um, basically, my as you see, my portfolio is really simple. I just want people to see everything like really easily. Um, I am from Saudi Arabia. Um, I went to a college there. It didn't go well. Then I had a gap year. Then I came to the U.S got stuck in a major I wasn't doing well at. Then I got a different scholarship. 
And I almost switched to linguistics, but last second, I don't know what happened. And I was like, journalism seems fun. And I'm doing YouTube videos. And I was working with a creative team and I enjoyed watching their videos. So I just switched to that. And also I took one of your classes, which taught me how to make a whole story by phone. So I was like, this major is fun. So I just switched to it. And in the portfolio, yeah, you can see like the pictures and the mm -hmm. videos. The pictures, I'm still working on them. There are more pictures I want to upload, but I usually take pictures in a studio and I just enjoy the darkness in them the whole time. Let's just see this. I'm back. If you are bored, you want to learn something new about people from different places, then I think this YouTube channel is for you. So I have been working on so many videos this summer that I'm so excited to share with you. I will post two videos a week. Yes, you heard me. Two videos a week. My videos will be on Mondays and Fridays at 12 p.m. in the PDT time zone. On Mondays, I will share videos of the questions I ask international students. I just feel like not many people know what international students are like in the U.S., what they like, what they hate, what they go through. Through. And on a Friday, the videos will be more open to be about things I do as an international student. Every international student is different. The Friday videos could be one-on-one -on -one conversations, interesting stories with some visuals, thoughts on things I see or feel here because of my life as an international student, and some cultural differences. All the videos I uploaded from now on will have both English and Arabic subtitles that you can activate from the settings below. Okay, this is the intro to my YouTube channel. Hope you enjoy the videos and just let me know what you think about them and what you want to see more. Bye. Take care. Oh my God, what fun that is! <laughs> I love that. Awesome. I have you been. I even sent that to me before. That's great that you're doing that. How exciting! Really? <laughs> Your persona, you. I... you know, you always try to pretend to be this shy guy, and you've got this great persona. <laughs> okay, it took me over a hundred times to do it. <laughs> hey. Like too too many takes and I, I struggle in Arabic we don't have he so I say only be the whole time so I struggled repeating the same word the whole time um I made the video private because it was too ambitious to be honest I made a promise okay I will make two videos a week and it translated to Arabic and that was too much uh, after one month I just um, had to change the plan and just make it whenever I have time to make a video. So that's why I made it a private because I don't want people to go to my YouTube channel, then see, oh, he's making two videos a week. Then they don't see any video for a whole month. So yeah, but, but thank you for that compliment about the personality. I, I, it, I tried my best, thank you. Yeah, so this is why video and media is so much fun is because it's about self expression, you know, um, so often, um, you know, not to knock traditional school, but you know, journalism is the one area where you get to where you're asked by, you know, a teacher or an instructor is like, what are you interested in? And you get to go and pursue that and go tell stories about that. Um, and so that's what's so cool about it. Uh, and you get to really, you know, sort of test the boundaries of your own comfort zone. You might think that you're um, shy and there's nothing wrong with being shy. Actually, some of the most brilliant writers and people who do a lot of really great things in journalism would consider themselves shy. Um, so uh, it's not, like I said, nothing wrong with being shy. Um, and yet, um, yeah, just, just pretty cool. Uh, okay, let's see, we're gonna look at, um, let's see here, Jazzy. Jazzy, what are the kinds of stories you like to tell? Yeah, so I love to tell long format stories. I also love to make like little advertisements and kind of like little trailers and such. Um, I think I sent one to you on. Is it PGK or let's see, I have trailer. The oh, trailer. there's a trailer. Yeah, okay, hold um, on a did that All one right. during COVID um, for, you know, graduating seniors last year. Um, I directed it and had. Feels 
So cool and so cool for a lot of reasons. So, you know, for anyone who graduated last spring and to some degree this spring, uh, you know, you miss the, the, uh, the opportunity of, of, of like really you know, kind of walking across the stage with all your peers and everything else. Imagine you spent four years together and then you don't have that. But that video so captured the celebratory or, you know, just celebration of, of, of like completing school. So that was really cool to see. And you are a drone pilot. Uh, but the, pr the producer that was on it was the <laughs> pilot. <laughs> okay. I flew, I've flown a drone before. <laughs> okay. But that's opened up a whole new world too. I mean, it's even making, you know, giving people literally a bird's eye view of all the things that, that are out there um, and that you can see. Um, Aaron, uh, you've got a link here that says a more professional look. What's what? what oh, yeah. Um, uh, if you scroll through my uh, videos on my page, you should be able okay, to. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just uh, do this. Do this. Okay. The moment that you ask, like, oh, just show one or two. Like, oh no, man. I gotta, <laughs> you I got go a back. drone. Oh, oh man, drone. I should have changed this. Should have changed that. A drone show reel. Oh yeah, so I got I got um I was teaching <laughs> myself how to fly the drone. Um, you can show that if you want. It's pretty fun. All right, let's look at that. The music is cool. So cool, so cool. <laughs> so where do you three want your your journalism degrees to take you? What's your what's your ideal future? <laughs> Not all at once. <laughs> um, I locationally, I would like to go to South America and go live down there for another year and hopefully just I, I'm hoping that my degree in like having good communication and being able to make media content can allow me to travel that's that's kind of the big hope that I have right now I'm not really looking at careers quite yet but I am looking at um, going out and experiencing the world uh-huh Jazzy yeah I just really want um you know I really want my work to just make a difference in the you know, in the community or just anywhere, no matter how big or how small it is. Um, if it's, you know, producing, you know, investigative solution based stories, stuff like that, um, or just, you know, even being a part of a media agency that helps change, um, you know, the outlook on the world, um, stuff like that, just anything that, you know, makes a positive difference. No. Um. For me, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking maybe one year in Santa Monica specifically. I just love the beach there or 
a country that speaks Spanish, like South America or Spain. But I think in the long run, I might move to Dubai because it's like nine hours of drive from my home and I want to be near my family. Um, yeah, my situation is different because of visa and immigration and stuff. So I cannot stay here until I have a job and my family is in a different country. So it's still a dilemma in my mind, honestly. But what I want to do is definitely creating you know, documentaries and editing videos. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All three of you are helping me with a project that uh, we're working on. So um, in addition to being a university professor, I'm also the executive director of something called the Journalistic Learning Initiative. And it's a program that's available to middle and high schools um, in Oregon and uh, in California, and we're expanding. And we're creating right now this uh, online um, course that's kind of a uh, how to make your take your smartphone and kind of turn, you know, be able to take this very powerful device that's in your pocket and go out and tell stories with it. And I think a lot of times when people see some of the examples of work that you've shown today or shared today, they think, oh, I got to have an expensive camera or I've got to spend all this money. But quite honestly, you know, like this little device in your pocket um, has got a pretty powerful camera on it, you know, or in, built into it. Maybe you talk about that a little bit. Mo, you were in a class that I uh, taught that was just about how to tell stories with your with your phone, but just give people an idea of, kind of what's possible with just uh, the phone in your pocket to get started, you know, in journalism. Yeah, I mean, before I took that class, I was thinking like, to make a story, you have to have a camera and you have to have good lights and stuff like this. But with the phone, you can just like, if you know how to use it, like how, what, what angle to use it, for example, like, um, like, if, like if there is a sign from this side, you don't want to be, you don't want to be, you don't want to be looking that side because you will look dark the whole time. Um, it's just, if you know how to use the stuff around you, you can make a good story. Um, it's a cheap and you can just buy cheap mic and small tripod with uh, a holder for the phone. And that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I made a good story with in your class. It's just, I didn't add it on my portfolio because in the portfolio, you want to add the best of the best. But I think it was, it was still good. It's something I will show uh, middle school students, definitely, if they ask for it. It, it was very good. <laughs> Jazzy, any thoughts? Yeah, I was actually going to add that. I think um, you know, having a smartphone actually made me realize that, you know, act, not made me realize, but actually helped me get into the field of journalism. Um, you know, helped me, it made me realize how much I love taking photos of just like my friends, of, you know, myself, you know, just off my device, and also how many smartphones I broke in the process trying to, you know, <laughs> take really cool videos either underwater thinking my phone was resistant or just like from a certain height and then it totally falls, you know? Um, so doing risky stuff like that totally made me realize, you know, this is probably, you know, the field I like to do and your phone can do really cool stuff, um, you know, especially from, for how small it is and how compact it is. There's some really great quality in there. Mm -hmm. Aaron? Yeah, you can do almost anything with your phone. Um, there's so much, like Mo was talking about, there's so much technique that you can use um, to like make your stuff look really clean, really nice. Um, yeah, and if you're running around having a good time like Jazzy and just taking pictures of everything that you see, uh, you like don't don't feel like you're being held back that by the equipment that you have. Like this this little camera will get you so far, and you can do so much with it. Um, yeah, so you you there's a there's a lot of amazing stuff that you can really create. It's all about like what you learn and what you want to make. Mm -hmm. Aaron, have you lost a drone? No, I have crashed it though several times. <laughs> I bought um I bought the DJI Mavic Mini and I was flying down an alley full speed. <laughs> this thing could go like 25 miles per hour and I heard my remote control go beep and I looked down and it said the signal's lost and then I looked up and my drone went poof just bashed into the wall. My heart stopped. Um yeah, so I've done some damage, but I haven't lost one yet. Yeah, yeah. 
So the other, it's a couple of other advantages to being a, a, you know, being a journalism major or deciding to go to college for journalism. So if one of the thing is, is that we don't have many finals, right? Not a lot of testing and exams. It's really about experiential learning, um, actually get, being out in the field, doing things. Um, just to give you an example, uh, one colleague and I have taken students to places like Cuba and Sri Lanka and Vietnam and New Zealand, uh, really, really amazing places where you get to mix with new cultures and discover all kinds of things that, that you might not see otherwise. We also have a program called Media in Ghana that takes students to um, Ghana, West Africa. Um, and that's been going on for about 20 years, that program. And it's really a, an amazing experience. Um, I got to tell you, honestly, the first time I went, it brought me to tears um, just because I was just so in awe of the beauty of the people and the music, the food and everything else. And so much that we often hear about Africa is very negative, um, is about, you know, genocide and, uh, you know, just corruption and all kinds of things. To, uh, and it's just a, a one-sided view of the beauty of that um, continent, but also certain countries um, like Ghana. Um, so that's another opportunity for students. And as you're hearing this, you might be thinking, oh my God, that sounds so expensive. How would I ever do that? But there are fellow uh, fellowships and scholarships and um, you know, there's financial aid. There's all kinds of ways to you know, scrabble together the money to have these kinds of experiences. And it just changes your life forever. Um, and I think just the opportunity to um, be exposed to new cultures, new food, new ideas, makes you a, a really well-rounded individual and, um, and just can change the course of your outlook on life. Um, so we got a little bit more time here. Um, I could, we could show um, some other things. Uh, let's see here. Aaron, is there another video that? Sure. Yeah, you can scroll on through my website there. I have a few. <laughs> um, I really, there's one uh, that I did actually in my gateway class that I kind of like called Tinkering in Tires. Uh, it's only a minute long. Okay. Cool. Hold on. So there's just a lot of really fun B roll. I had so much. Is the guy working at a bike shop um, and everything's so like geometrical uh, and the colors are really nice? Oh, or oh, you can see my music video, uh, but that's. I didn't really make that. I'm just in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll we'll look at this one. I grew up as a tinkerer. My dad is the definition of a tinkerer and an inventor. He just likes to play with the stuff, take it apart, make it better, improve it. And so I kind of grew up with that philosophy. One thing that my dad and I always did growing up is called the invention convention. Students would get together and they would invent something to make the world better. Every year we would, you know, get ready and, tink and tinker all year round until I would come up with, a, with an invention and my dad would help me take it from conception to, to like a, a prototype product. And we presented at this invention convention fair, invented a better way to toast a marshmallow. I coined it the, the roaster toaster. They would encapsulate the, uh, the marshmallow and you could put the marshmallow in the fire and it would never get burnt. So you come out with a perfectly brown, all the way around golden brown marshmallow. It actually works. That might be the, the inception of all of this is, is inventing. Awesome. You know, and when you talk about the power of storytelling, so there's some subtle things there that um, may be you, but you know, Aaron, the the foreground, like looking at that guy through the spokes of that bicycle, you know, the super close ups that it opened with and the sound, you know, the rich sound of, of the tinkering and all that stuff, like really brought that story to life as opposed to just kind of a flat, like, okay, let's just watch this guy, you know, work on a bicycle. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, Jazzy, did you have one maybe you wanted me to show or? It was just a package from last term, you know, the acro. Okay. You don't All right. have to know it, but huh? <laughs> it's, just, it's just more my voiceover work, doing reporting work. I still yeah, do don't, 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 uh, don't, uh, <laughs> don't, don't undersell it. <laughs> um, okay, so I think is this it? If you could graph uh, the amount yes, of acro yes. and teaching you were doing, it started slow, then went more and more and more. 
and then COVID happened and it went. Jacob Brown and Debbie Collis met when they were 17 years old while doing gymnastics. Last year, they started Jacob and Debbie Acrobatics. Since the pandemic hit in March of 2020, it has impacted both their business and the acro community. Back in March, when COVID hit, just everything changed because, I mean, we could no longer really travel anymore. We're doing a lot more stuff online. Um, some people are still able to be with their partners at home and they're quarantined together. Um, but it's, you know, a lot smaller number. While acro is a contact sport, Brown tells me he thinks at least 90% of the acro community is unable to train. During this era, the pandemic era, you can wear a mask, but some people frown upon doing acro because uh, wearing a mask is not a foolproof way of preventing transmission of, of COVID. So many have, have just stopped doing it altogether but probably 90% of the acro community is barely doing any acro. Despite the barriers of the current pandemic, Brown and Collis will continue to teach their online classes. We want to keep acro alive as, as much as we can and, you know, still be safe. Reporting in Eugene, this is Jazzy McKinley. Awesome. And so, you know, uh, story, storytelling... The atmosphere on oh, campus oh, is sorry, has been pause that. Start. Okay, yeah. So the storytelling hasn't stopped. We've been in the midst of a pandemic, but we all are still, you know, battling the, the challenges of, uh, you know, just keeping safe distances and, and all that. Um, any closing words from folks um, to students who are seventh and eighth graders and are trying to figure out, you know, like what they're gonna do with their futures? I would actually like to hear from them if they'd like to say anything. Does that, someone have a question or I think that in terms of participants, are there some here with questions? Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything for us, uh, we're, we're here. I don't think so. Yeah, we're not really sure how many live participants we have today. Uh, we, uh, okay. we will be showing this again later. Uh, via YouTube okay. for students to be able to participate. Gotcha. But um, I think what I'm hearing today is that this, you know, this is an amazing opportunity for people to be in a uh, field that they are passionate about and can make a difference. It sounds like it's an opportunity to, uh, as you've used the term, tell stories, have your voices heard. Um, I think as a, a last um, question I would have is, um, do you have any um, anything particular you would tell these students as far as if this is something you're interested in? Um, how do you get how do you start thinking about it even before you get to college? Um, and I also um, I you know heard many times that um, the digital media yeah. is well a, I a think great way of, to have a voice, yeah. but you have to do it responsibly. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you start with the what's in your pocket, you know, um, you can with some very simple skills, you can actually start telling stories and sharing them with the world in ways that, you know, I certainly couldn't have imagined when I was your age. So that's for sure. But I'll let, let each of you say something. Yeah, I was just going to add that, you know, um, when I was in middle school or sixth and seventh grade and even eighth grade, I had no idea this is the field I, that I like, you know, that was for me. Um, I was a very shy person, extremely shy. Um, and now I'm extremely, you know, more outgoing. I love talking to people, communicating with people. So you never know, um, you know, what may be for you until you kind of just put yourself out there um, and make your make yourself um, not necessarily uncomfortable, but um, unless you kind of do something that's new, you won't really know until, um, you know, know if that's what's right for you. But um, just don't be afraid to try something new. Yeah. Uh, I would say one of the mistakes I made early on in doing video and in uh, music production for a while is that I tried to do everything completely by myself. It gets lonely. It's kind of hard. And it's so much more fun to find like people who are already doing it and sort of jump in the flow with them. So if you find something that you want to explore and that you're interested in, find people who are already doing it. You'll learn a ton and probably have a lot more fun. Great. Mohammed? Yeah, I was, uh, I mean, 
I actually never knew I would take journalism until my fourth year in college. So that was really late for me, but um, the journalism school is really supportive and the creative people there, they try to help each other. And that's the best thing I found in the journalism school. Um, some people think about it as a competition, but no, it's actually a collaboration. Everyone, want, everyone wants to lift every, everyone with them. And I enjoy this. Um, like I took classes with Aaron now, he's one of my friends, we hang out, we talk about techniques and stuff. And that's something really interesting. Um, I will say you have your phone, just go out, take videos, photos. Um, if they are good, they are good. If they are not that good, you can just look at them and ask someone about how to improve them. And definitely will find someone who's like a mentor for you. Try to find a mentor, basically. Great. Uh, I Thank think you. I think that's it, Barbara. <laughs> really? I'm sorry. I really appreciate all of you being here today. I think a common thing that we're hearing from all of our uh, student panelists today is uh, find what you're passionate about. Um, college is an opportunity for you to explore what you might be interested in. And I really appreciate you all focusing um, you know, on an area that uh, people may not even be aware of under the School of Journalism. And um, we just really appreciate you being here today and want to um, Hopefully we've given um, students something to think about. And um, I appreciate all of you. I wish you success in your work and just thank you for sharing today. And um, after this, we are going to uh, break for lunch and we will be returning to our program today at 1215. So for those of you who have joined us live today, thank you for being here. We'll be back at 1215. And to all of our panelists, we really, really appreciate all of your insights. We thank you for sharing your amazing works. And um, I'm sure you've given students a lot of food for thought. So thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Goodbye. Hello and welcome back to the 2021 Reach for Success event. Continuing with today's theme of introducing you to areas of study that you may not know about and also introducing you to uh, some of the really cool things that you're able to study. Today, we will have presentations from a panel of students who are in our STEM programs. Hi, my name is Annabelle Chang and I'm from Corvallis, Oregon. I'm currently a third year biochemistry major and business administration minor at the University of Oregon. And I had two main reasons for choosing to major in biochemistry. The first one, if you look at my photo, was fairly obvious. Um, you can see that I don't have hair, and that's because in middle school I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and that caused me to lose my hair, and because of that I became interested in the processes which allow our bodies to work. And the second reason I chose biochemistry was because I was influenced by scientists and engineers in my family that I really look up to. And I chose to go to U of O, even though I'm from Corvallis, where my dad teaches at OSU, because between science and engineering, I decided I want to do science, so I decided to go to U of O. And I also liked how Eugene is close to home in Corvallis, but I still have a good balance of independence here. And the last reason I chose U of O was for financial reasons, because I wanted to save some money at a state school. And in the future, I hope to become a doctor, and I want to be especially focused on autoimmune diseases, and I hope to treat patients and also do clinical research. So if you're interested in a biochemistry major, how should you prepare in middle school and then going on to high school? Well, no matter what grade you're in and no matter what major you're interested in, talking to people you know is always very helpful. So these could be your family, your friends, your family friends, acquaintances, um, no matter who they are, just ask what, what they studied in college and ask them to explain what their particular major was all about. You can also ask what they're doing right now, if they've already graduated, or even if they're still in school. And you can do this to learn more about different possible paths you might want to take. Um, this can also be very helpful to learn about what certain majors actually mean. Because when I was in middle school and even in high school, I personally didn't even know what over half of the majors listed out in these, those school brochures and online. I didn't even know what many of them were. And so it was really hard for me to choose because 
I didn't know what those majors meant. And so because of the limited number of classes that we get to take in high school, we're not exposed to that many of the, the fields or the majors that we have um, options to take. So talking to different people can give you that exposure so that you can have a better idea of what you want to do later. Another thing that everyone will have to do, no matter what major you choose, is to fulfill some general or core education classes. So for those, I would recommend everyone to take AP classes, which I'm sure you've all heard of, and dual credit classes in high school. So dual credit classes, um, I'm sure it's different for every high school and maybe some high schools won't offer them. But I know for my high school, we had a program with Lane Community College and it was called College Now, where some classes in high school also qualified as Lane Community College credit so that when I went to college, I could use those as transfer credit. And that counted for a lot of my general education classes. And using these to fulfill general education classes in college can help you free up your schedules later on. It can save you some tuition costs. And if you're not as interested in um, fields like history or language or things like that, like me, then taking those classes in high school and then transferring them into college can let you be free from taking certain subjects of classes in college. So each university accepts different AP classes and different dual credit classes, so you should check for each college. But for me, I found credit from classes like AP US History, AP US Government, and AP Language very useful. And if you're interested in a STEM major, it's possible that the AP classes related to your major can help you skip some major required classes, but it's also possible that they don't apply and you'll have to take those classes again because they're more strict about um, classes for your major. But either way, I would highly recommend you still take those advanced high school STEM classes like AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, and AP Calculus because they'll help you have a better understanding of those fields before college. And then when you take those, you'll be able to know more about what you enjoy or what you don't enjoy and you'll also have a better understanding of the material so that you can do better in your college courses. So what can you do with a biochemistry degree after you graduate? Well, there's a lot of different career paths that you can take, and one of the most common is working in industry. And this just means that you work for companies that sell goods or services. And you can do this right after you graduate college, or you could do master's or PhD and then decide that you want to do industry. So, some examples of companies that you could work for with a biochemistry degree is companies that research and develop drugs, companies that develop medical technology like equipment or testing kits for diseases, companies that develop consumer goods like makeup products, cleaning supplies, or food and drink, companies that provide lab equipment or lab services like pipettes, glassware, centrifuges, chemicals, or services like DNA extraction, sequencing, and genotyping, or there could be companies that develop biomaterials for prosthetic limbs, drug delivery, implants, or companies that develop biotechnology like plant biotech for more and better food production, biofuels that are fuels that are more sustainable and renewable, agrochemicals like better pesticides and fertilizers. As you can see, there's a lot of different options of, of companies that you could work for, and if you're more interested in certain things like makeup or um, food, or uh, equipment, medical field. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you could incorporate your other interests and biochemistry and end up working for a company that um, suits you best. And if you're interested in something non-laboratory based, you could also do sales for a company. And this would focus more on communication, networking, and business, but you would still need that scientific knowledge of biochemistry to sell these um, science-related things. And another path that you could go on after biochemistry, a biochemistry undergraduate degree, is to do medicine. So some examples of things that you could do in medicine are being a medical doctor, where you treat patients and you can also do clinical research, or a pharmacist, where you're involved with prescriptions and medications, or a dentist, um, which you treat teeth. And for all of these, you would no need to do more school. So for um, um, a doctor, you would go, need to go to med school. For a pharmacist, you would need to go to farm school. And for a dentist, you would need to go to dental school. And another option of a career that you could do is um, to go into academia. And that usually is becoming a professor. So those are the people that teach at the university. So they teach you classes in college. And usually, they also do research. And to do this, you would need to go to grad school and get a PhD to become a professor. 
And finally, another option that I have on here is law. So I think this is something that most people don't talk about as much as an option for STEM majors, but um, you could become a patent lawyer. And those people, um, those lawyers help they prepare, they file, they prosecute patents for inventors. So you would still need the scientific knowledge in the background for these inventions that people have, but um, you would have to go to law school after your undergraduate degree to become a patent lawyer. And again, these are all just some options, but there are many more than this. And if you're interested in a particular one, you can look them up and you can find um, a lot of information about how to become whatever you're thinking of doing and, and what things you can do right now on that. So I mentioned that professors not only teach classes, but they also conduct research. And research is just like what it sounds. It's just researching or looking into something that's interesting and that will be interesting and helpful for other people as well. So I'll introduce the coolest thing that I've studied since I became involved in research at U of O. So you can see here that there's a person dancing and you can only see that they're dancing because they're labeled with glow sticks on their body. And without the glow sticks, you wouldn't be able to see them dancing because it's too dark and you wouldn't be able to see um, what dance moves they're doing or um, how they're moving around. So you can imagine instead of using glow sticks, you could use invisible ink, kind of like those in spy movies. And you wouldn't be able to see what's drawn or what's written until you shine a special kind of light onto the invisible ink. So when you shine this light onto the, invis onto the invisible ink that's labeled on this person, then you can see the ink moving around and that tells you how this person is moving around. So using something similar, we can look at the movement of DNA. And DNA is um, a molecule that carries the genetic information um, of all living things. So it tells your body how to function so that we can be alive and um, do the things that we wanna do. So because DNA is so important, we wanna see how it's moving around. So we can use something similar to the invisible ink and label the DNA. And I represented this with the two green ovals here. And similar to the invisible ink, you can't see these labels until you shine it with a special kind of light. And in this case, it's a laser. And using the laser, then we can see the labels and we can see the labels moving. And that tells us how the DNA is moving. And that's kind of like here where we label the person with invisible ink and then when we shine the UV light onto them, we can see the ink moving, and that tells us how this person is moving. So this was the coolest thing that I've studied since I came to University of Oregon, and I highly encourage all of you to also look out for some research that you're interested in when you are in high school or in college, and I'm sure that no matter how different your interests are, you'll be able to find something for you. But I'd also like to say that um, you don't have to have it all figured out. You can go in um, middle school and high school thinking that you want to do one thing, and then in your first year of college or even later find out that that's not what you want to do. And I think college is a really good time to try out new things and to figure out what you like and what you don't like, and ultimately find out what you want to pursue in the future. So I hope that um, what I talked about today was helpful in that, and um, I hope that you all have the best of luck in finding what you're passionate about and um, what you want to do in the future. Thanks. First, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Chloe Chavatel, and I grew up here in Eugene, Oregon. I'm currently pursuing a degree in math with a physics minor at the University of Oregon. I didn't always know that I wanted to study math. When I started here, I was just a physics major, and then I added math as a dual degree. But slowly as I took more and more math classes, I discovered that that was the subject that I was really excited about and really good at. So I decided to switch to only a math major and pursue that for the rest of my studies. Um, I'm only a third year, but I am planning on graduating with my bachelor's this spring. And then next year, I'm going to pursue a master's degree in math here at the University of Oregon. After that, I dream of going on to a PhD program, but applications haven't started for that yet. So I'm not sure where I'll end up. And after I receive my doctorate, I would love to go into teaching and academia and do math and share my love of math for the rest of my life. So I mentioned that I didn't always know that I wanted to be a math major. And part of the reason for that is that I didn't really know what studying math in college would look like. I took math classes in middle and high school, and I did pretty well at them. But by the time I got to calculus, I thought maybe I would be nearing the end of my math studies. 
Um, luckily, when I got to college, I found out that there were a lot of opportunities that I would get in the math major that I did not know about beforehand. Um, one that's been really, really important to me is the ability to teach math. So I have the awesome opportunity to work with some professors and some other students to teach math in a sort of innovative way to, in my case, first through eighth graders at a program called the Eugene Math Circle. And there, I feel like I get the chance to show kids that math is more than just the formulaic math that you might do in schools. And the opportunity to watch people have that aha moment and to share my love of the subject and to share how fun math can be with children has been really amazing and a super important part of my career here at the University of Oregon. Something else that's been really exciting to me as a math major is the opportunity to do all sorts of different projects. It turns out that if you're pretty good at math and you have something interesting to input, that a lot of people want you to work on their project with them. I know I've gotten to work with a couple of people in the physics department. Uh, most notably, I got to be sort of a math assistant on a project where we built a satellite and are in the process of sending it to space, which has been amazing. So I get to do all sorts of physics and engineering on that project that I'm maybe not exposed to in just my math classes alone. I've also gotten to work in the chemistry department. Um, right now, we are building a computer simulation that models DNA, which I think is really, really cool. And I love getting to see the intersection of the math that I love to do with all of these subjects that it's very useful for. The third reason that I love being a math major is it really feels like I'm getting away with just playing and solving puzzles and doing games for my degree. There's, of course, a lot of really hard work and a lot of days that it's not so fun, but a lot of the time it feels like my homework is just getting to solve riddles and solve puzzles and just play around with this awesome machinery. And it's really, really rewarding when you can solve a really complicated math problem. And it's also really fun. So I wasn't prepared for how much of math is, is creative and that I really, really enjoy. So if you're somebody who thinks that they might be interested in a math major, or if you just know that you like science and math in general, and you're not sure if you want to be a math major, um, there are a couple of things that you could do to maybe get a head start on pursuing a math degree in college. But I think it's important to note that in middle and high school, you can do some things to prime yourself for a math degree, but there's nothing that you have to do. If you show up with a passion for the subject and you're eager to learn and you've taken all of the math that is offered to you in high school, I think you're in a really, really great spot no matter what you do. Um, that being said, if you're super keen to get started on preparing for a math degree right now, here are a couple of things that you could do to help out with that. Um, the first and maybe the most obvious thing that you could do is just take the math classes that are offered at your school. If you have the opportunity to take a math class or forgo it, I would obviously recommend that you take the class. And it's also important that you're engaged in these classes, that you're trying your best, that you ask questions if you're confused, because this will really help you start getting ready for mathematical thinking. Um, so my first tip is take math and try your best. Uh, then another thing that could be helpful, not only for a math degree, but really for any degree at all, is to sign up for college credit if you get the chance to. I cannot stress enough how important these dual enrollment programs were for me. In high school, I didn't really understand how helpful it would be, but I did sign up for college credit when it was offered to me. And I ended up being able to come in with a lot of my gen eds taken care of. Um, this not only let me take more classes that I was really interested in, instead of having to take classes in all sorts of subjects when I got to college, but it's also allowing me to graduate a year early by having that taken care of. Um, some of this credit might be in math if you want to be a math major. For example, if you took calculus, that would probably count towards a math degree. But even if it's not in math, or even if you're not sure you want to be a math major, signing up for college credit if it's offered to you is so, so important and so amazingly helpful. Another thing you could do if you think that you're interested in studying math is to just play around with math. The internet is an amazing resource and there are all sorts of like YouTube channels. I really like Numberphile or websites that have a whole bunch of different examples of math problems. And some might be really hard to understand right now without a very strong formal math background, 
but others are easy. I know I mentioned that a lot of math just feels like solving riddles and puzzles. And if you go online and play around with mathy riddles and puzzles, then you're already fine tuning this mathematical thinking that would be really, really helpful in, in like pursuing a, a math degree in college. Um, and my last tip is again, not to worry about it that much. Um, I know we all hear stories about people who are crazy, crazy advanced in math from a really young age, but you don't have to be those people to be a very successful math major. So my advice is not to get burnt out, do math when it's fun, do extra math only when it's fun, and the rest will fall into place. If you show up to college excited about math, then you can be a successful math major. So if you're somebody who thinks that they might want to get a math degree, a very logical question is, what can I do with my math degree? And the awesome thing about studying math is that it gives you these problem solving tools that make you a really, really good candidate for a lot of careers. I only have time to talk about a couple of them today, but if math is something you're seriously considering, it's pretty easy to hop on the internet and search math careers or what can I do with a math degree, and you'll see all sorts of options will pop up. That being said, um, a couple of the careers that I'm interested in or that I've seen my peers go into after getting a math degree are listed here. Um, the first is what I mentioned I think I would like to do, which is to go into teaching and research. So in particular, people who are professors who teach at a university oftentimes also do research, which is exactly what it sounds like. You think about open problems in your field and you try your best to solve them or to study them or to learn something new about what you're studying. Um, it's worth noting that if you do want to go ahead and work at a university as a professor, if you want to do research, you probably have to get a graduate degree which means that you want to go to more sort of technical college after you get your undergraduate degree. Um, for example, you would probably need a PhD to become a professor. I think that this would be an awesome fit for me because I really like working on difficult problems on my own, and I'm pretty sure that I love teaching. So this would be a good career for you if you also share these passions. A very different option that you could go into with a math degree is to study finance or to work with money. This is probably what I've seen most of my peers who chose not to go to grad school do. And usually you go and you do risk analysis or you develop models for banks and for places that handle money. Um, a couple of jobs that a math major could do in the finance industry is an actuary or an analyst. Finally, and I also touched on this a little bit, mathematicians are super, super in demand from other people doing sort of industry work or engineering or all sorts of STEM work. A lot of people need someone who is pretty good at technical math for their projects. Um, engineers use mathematicians a lot. I mentioned that I have worked with physicists and with chemists. Uh, people who study climate like to employ mathematicians. And another really cool job opportunity that I've seen presented in my department is getting to work on cryptography or cybersecurity, and you get to help develop algorithms to encode information, which I personally think is really, really cool. Okay, so that's all I have today about being a math major. But if you are interested in this and think it might be a good path for you, or if you want to hear more, I've included my department's website as just a place to start. Uh, it's math.uoregon.edu. And there you'll find all sorts of information about what it's like to be a math major at my school at University of Oregon. Um, you might see like a sample degree guide for what kind of classes math majors take and maybe a list of projects that people in the math department are doing or that are available to undergraduates. If you want to go to UO, this would be especially helpful to get a feel for what being a math major here would be like, but it's pretty indicative of math programs all across the country. So thank you guys again for listening to what I have to say, and I hope you have an awesome rest of the program. Hi everyone, my name is Maya Ponde, and I am a senior and soon to be graduate at the University of Oregon. I'm originally from Portland, and I am majoring in both biochemistry and political science. I'm pre-med, so I will be applying to medical school in June of this year. I decided to major in biochemistry my junior year of high school for two reasons. I was initially drawn to the major because I knew I was interested in both medicine and science and wanted to choose a major that would cover some of my pre-med requirements. 
My junior year of high school, I was introduced to personalized medicine, a relatively new approach to treating cancer by editing the cell's DNA. This drove me to enter college as a biochemistry major, and I picked up political science along the way due to my love for law and current events. Throughout my time at college, I've been involved in a number of on and off campus organizations, including the Asclepiad Pre-Medical Society, Campus Shuttle, Rotaract, Greek Life, SVP, Peer Advising, and working as a barista at the Campus Coffee Outlet. I've also been involved with the Rivkin Center and my undergraduate research in the Chemistry Department's Andy Marcus Lab. I also try to take advantage of the opportunities that being a UO student affords me, whether that's studying on campus, biking around Eugene with friends, or going to football games. That's a photo on the slideshow that I took at the 2020 Rose Bowl game. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did to prepare for college and what I found helpful. So when I was in high school, I had a pretty good idea that I wanted to be a physician, but I also knew that I had a number of interests that I wanted to explore. My biggest recommendation is to start as early as possible. You can only know whether or not you like a certain field if you've given it a try, and it is just as important to know the subjects you do like as the ones you don't. Another great way to prepare for college is to take AP or IB classes. These classes typically give you a closer to a college level workload, and they cover material that you will probably see as an undergraduate. On top of that, you can often get college credit if you do well on your AP or IB exam. Dual enrollment is another great way to get college classes out of the way if it is something that your school offers. On top of that, participating in extracurriculars is a great way to help narrow down what you want to do. I was in Model United Nations as a high schooler, which led me to become more interested in foreign affairs and eventually brought me to my first political science class. Extracurriculars are also a great way to show colleges who you are as an individual. Next is to consider your options. So a great way to start thinking about college is to attend college fairs. This allows you to learn more about the opportunities that different schools might offer you and whether or not you can see yourself on their campus. This is a great place to start just to expose yourself to the schools that are out there, and you don't need to be a junior or senior in high school in order to begin doing this. If you have questions about being a college student, especially at a particular school, you can also reach out to current undergraduates to get more information about what their experience has been like and what kinds of classes they've been able to take. This will give you a better feel for what it means to be an active member of that campus community. Once you have a better idea of which schools you might be interested in, do some research into them. Use their website, social media, and YouTube to get a better feel for what their campus is like. Most schools will also allow you to go on a campus tour, which I would highly recommend if you have the opportunity. If your school has any academic or guidance counselors, they can probably provide you with valuable insight as to which schools and programs you may like based off of what you want from your college experience. Finally, remember to start looking at financial aid and scholarship options early. It's never too soon to be aware of the options available to you and what their due dates are. Filling out your FAFSA on time is also really important when looking at financial aid. When you first get to college, most schools will require you to take some sort of core curriculum or general education classes. These are classes outside of your intended field of study. Try to take advantage of these classes. Look at them as an opportunity to explore a field you might not have been able to learn about otherwise. Political science is something I am very interested in and would not have picked up as a double major if it had not been for my general education requirements. Don't be afraid to reach out to academic advisors once you get to college, too. Not only do they keep you on track to graduate, but they can help you explore different fields and careers and connect you with campus organizations and opportunities. Finally, it is important to keep an open mind. Tons of people switch their major or career path when they get to college, and if you are in that boat, it's totally normal. It is so much better to realize 
that you want to change majors or careers than to push through a subject that you are not as passionate about. There are a lot of cool careers that you can have with biochemistry or political science degrees. Common careers for a biochemistry major that wants to work in healthcare could be a physician or doctor, a nurse, or a physician's assistant. You can also pursue academic work if you're interested in getting a master's or a PhD. This is the kind of job that does raw science experiments, collects data, and uses that data to run more experiments. Industry is a little bit different than academic research. Any company that uses chemicals needs to work with chemists at some point. Industry has more to do with product development and it is more like chemistry and biochemistry applied to everyday life. For example, the skin company, The Ordinary, works with a team of chemists on their Dyson team that design their products and make sure they're safe and effective. With political science, one of the most common career paths is law. Lawyers are tasked with the job of representing different groups and individuals in court. They also help to write legal documents and contracts. If you're interested in being someone who designs laws, you can go into government or policy. And finally, if you want to be a politician or run for public office, having a background in political science is always very helpful. But these are just a few examples. The world is really your oyster and there are so many cool opportunities that a college degree can afford you. Something cool I've gotten to do in my time in college is spectroscopy. This is a diagram of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. Basically, when light hits an object, it's either absorbed or reflected. Light particles move in a wave and different colors of light correspond to different wavelengths. If a wavelength of light is reflected off of an object and it matches a wavelength within the visible range, then we will be able to see it. Sometimes when we observe a chemical reaction, we can see a color change. This physical conformational change can cause the freshly formed compound to absorb and reflect light in a new way, ultimately leading to that color change. Sometimes in science, we want to know how quickly a reaction is occurring. By using UV vis spectroscopy, we can actually measure this. We put a small amount of sample into our spectrophotometer, which then shoots light at it, and we watch it over time to see which wavelengths of light are absorbed or reflected. This helps give us information about what is actually happening in our reaction. This is something you will often see done in a chemistry lab, and it's a technique that I have used within my research. Something cool I've gotten to learn about as a political science major is the Supreme Court. When someone takes an issue to court, it does not go directly to the Supreme Court. When a case goes to court, it usually starts at a local level. If either the defendants or the prosecution want a second opinion, they can file for an appeal so the higher court hears their case. This can happen over and over again until it eventually reaches the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court currently has nine justices and they have the final say on court cases. If four out of five justices decide that they want to hear a case, then that case will go before the Supreme Court. It takes a majority of the justices voting in your favor to win. What I like about political science is that it allows me to apply scientific investigative methods to social studies and humanities. One cool thing I've gone to do is write a senior thesis in political science. So I'm actually studying the COVID-19 pandemic from a social scientist standpoint. For my thesis, I'm looking at the political conditions within the United States that have prevented us from more effectively controlling the pandemic. I just wanna finish off this presentation by reminding you that it is totally okay to not have everything figured out right now. Though some people stick to the same career path they chose in high school, the majority of people will change their plans at least once and that is more than okay. Education is all about exploration, so don't let any uncertainty you're feeling discourage you from applying to college or pursuing new avenues in school. All right, we would like to thank Annabelle, Maya, and Chloe for taking time out of their busy schedules to share uh, information about their majors. Uh, Maya is a perfect example of someone who has two passions and decided to major in both of them. So that tells you she's a pretty busy student because as you've heard earlier, uh, major versus a minor, major you take more classes. So again, um, I thank these students for showing us the different 
areas and just talking about some of the wonderful things that you can do. And again, the common theme is you have time to figure out what you are passionate about. You have time to figure out what you want to do. And there are plenty of opportunities to explore. At this time, we would like to share with you um, a couple of wonderful programs that we have on the University of Oregon campus that uh, we consider to be pre-college programs. And these are programs that will help you, um, again, start taking that journey to college. And so the program that I have the privilege of being associated with is the Oregon Young Scholars Program. And this is a four-year college preparation program. It's open to rising high school freshmen from traditionally underrepresented groups. So if you're graduating from the eighth grade, um, this would be the time for you to apply uh, for next year. We are still working on what this summer will look like. Uh, we think it will be a hybrid program, but um, traditionally uh, when we're under normal operating circumstances, you would be on campus um, for a week to nine days. And then during the school year, we also work to support you and we check in and just make sure you're doing well academically and we have quarterly meetings. But the biggest thing behind the OYSP is that we are a family and we create community. But the goal is to build your academic, social and personal skills needed for uh, success. Um, the Summer Academy, um, you will get to work with UL faculty, staff and students. Um, we have a wonderful, wonderful group of uh, students, both um, undergraduate and graduated students who serve as resident advisors when we're on campus. And when we're virtual, they serve as uh, virtual mentors. Um, we also work on establishing, building relationships with the families and making sure that you just have your whole village of support. It requires that you commit to your own success and the success of your peers. And our goal is that you find your way to college. And right now we have 95 to 98% um, of our students do go on to college. And the only reason it's not 100% is that we do have a few students who um, choose to go into the military. But again, Oregon Young Scholars Program, you can go on our website to get more information. We will be making the, um, uh, the link will be live um, soon. And these are just some of the things that we have heard OISP scholars say they've learned. Um, they get out of their comfort zone, trying new things and being independent. They learned how not to let people bring you down when you're trying to reach for your own success and happiness and how to think critically. I learned how to communicate and I learned how to change my community for the better. I learned how it feels to be on campus as a student. I learned that there's always a great community of people if you look for it. I learned managing time was a big deal that I feel like I've learned. I've learned that preparation in advance of my classes is important. I learned the importance of treating the people around you as your equals, even if they may, may be younger than you. So as you can see, the OISB doesn't only focus on academic success and growth, but it also focuses on personal and social growth. And we just thought we'd share a few photos of some of the uh, fun opportunities. We have classroom opportunities, we have social opportunities, and we always have a field trip every year. So again, if you'd like more information about the Oregon Young Scholars Program, you can just uh, go into the University of Oregon website and type in either simply OISP or Oregon Young Scholars Program to get more information. Uh, we are currently serving students from uh, Portland, Eugene, Springfield, Roseville, and Roseburg, and Wilsonville. So if you would like more information or are interested in joining us, please uh, go into the Oregon Young Scholars website. And it's all about family. And then another great program we have is the Summer Academy to Inspire Learning, also called SAIL. I really didn't know where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do with my life after high school. My family's always had trouble with money and college just never seemed to be an option for me. I honestly just felt like I wouldn't belong at a university. But then I found SAIL and it turned everything around. I felt welcome in a place that was totally new to me. And I found the help I needed to apply for student loans and scholarships. After going through the SAIL summer program at the UO, I saw that college wasn't this big, scary idea. 
It was meeting amazing new people. Taking fun and interesting classes that helped me find new passions. Making friends and pushing your limits. Connection. Community. And inspiration. Because even if my future feels uncertain, I can still prepare myself for success along the way. Come join us for the Sales Summer Program at the University of Oregon. Sale inspires me to engage with people who have different perspectives. I would have found it incredibly helpful to be a part of a program like this in high school, and I want to help ensure that others have that opportunity. I wish I would have known about a program like Sale when I was in high school. Sale gives you a starting point for learning more about college, and they also help facilitate your journey there. Thanks to the Sale program, I entered college confidently and ready to face whatever challenges adulthood threw at me. SEO has the potential to change the lives of students and provide them with opportunities beyond their imagination. As a low-income student, I am extremely proud to be a part of this team and be able to give back to communities. Having the opportunity to learn about college early on in high school was very crucial for me. SEO becomes a family in less than a week, and the people are so wonderful that I have joined, as, I have joined the team as a mentor. Uh, there's free resources, preparation for pre-college, and an opportunity to create a community. The program is meaningful to me because I've had the opportunity to share my own experiences and the lessons I've learned with other passionate students. At the same time, hearing from them how excited they are to go through the college process serves as a reminder of the value of our work as mentors. And it is very rewarding to see people go from having goals to actually meeting them. Seattle is special to me for so many reasons. I feel it to be a safe space for K-12 students to talk about their dreams and aspirations, meet friends, gain college mentors, and have all their post-high school questions answered. Seattle is really here to help. Seattle is special to me because it allows me to be a resource and support system for individuals who may have never had that support in school. Listening to students' goals and seeing them grow as a person genuinely makes me happy. And honestly, the amount of resources Seattle makes available to students makes me wish I had it when I was in middle school and high school. The program has connected me with some really great people and I've learned a lot through all of the programs SAIL offers. I wish I had a program like SAIL when I was in high school so I could have had the opportunity to have college mentors guiding me through the application process and preparing me for college. It has given me the opportunity to grow as a person and mentor and it's been rewarding to pass what I've learned to others. I can't think of a better experience than helping students go into higher education with all the tips and tricks uh, we've learned along the way so that they can have the easiest possible transition from high school to college. It is the opportunity to grow as a person on many different levels. In my experience from being a mentor and taking on leadership roles with the program, I have been able to develop new skills that I can use on a daily basis to continue helping others. I have also found a new community whose goals and aspirations are similar to mine, and that is truly incredible. Okay, this brings us to the end of our 2021 Reach for Success event. I hope you're excited about all the possibilities that are available to you in college and that you're even more confident that you can go to college if you start getting ready now. Just remember, it's not too early to get started on the path to success, and we all know that education is the key to success in many ways. Education represents power, freedom, and the ability to make change. No matter what losses you may experience in life, you can never lose what you've learned. Remember, success comes in many ways and forms. I hope that every day you will reach for success. If you would like to end our event with something I thought you would enjoy, we will take you on an insider tour of game day at Austin Stadium. Enjoy and thank you again for joining us for the 2021 Reach for Success event. As a reminder, this event will be made available
through a live stream on YouTube so you can see it in its entirety. Thank you again and enjoy. Ashley, can you say that for me? Like he coined well, the never phrase. Never rains in Hudson Stadium. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to the University of Oregon. My name is Jaira and I'm going to be your tour guide for today's festivities. Usually I'm here on campus studying anthropology or linguistics, but today we're putting that aside because it's what? Game day. So let's get started with this game day experience and as always, go! Austin Stadium, so it seats 54,000 people. And a fun fact, the outside of the O that you see on that huge O is the shape of Austin Stadium. How cool is that? All right, so now we're gonna check out the Mashoski Center. I see a nice little obstacle course there. You already know I'm about to hit it up. Yo, Coach Feld is coming. Like, this man is huge. Hey, what's up? Oh my God. Okay, so have y'all ever heard of Flex Friday? Flex Friday! He is the man that came up with Flex Friday. Like, he's like jacked up. Hi, y'all. Y'all are so beautiful. Hi, y'all. So now we're actually inside of the press box. So here you have all the media, you have all the coaches as well, some food I'm about to hit up later. But first, we actually have to stop by the booth of Jerry Allen. He's actually the voice of the Ducks. Hey, Jerry. Dara, what's up? So in your 34 years, what has been the best experience you've had? You know, the best experience is probably a bunch of them together, and that's mm -hmm. being around the fans and the reaction we get from fans when things are going well and everybody's happy. Yes. The Kenny Wheaton play, the pick. Yeah. Washington throws toward the corner of the end zone. It is intercepted! Intercepted! The Ducks have the ball! Kenny Wheaton is going to score! But there's so many others that it's not fair to put one above everybody else because they're all equally just great. Oh, I love that answer. I love that answer. But yeah, so thank you for letting me visit yeah, you today. Yeah. I'm going to get busy and do some football. But yes, go Ducks. Go Ducks, always. Always. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we're sitting here with Don Essig. He coined the phrase. Never rains in Hudson Stadium. I mean, it doesn't. Look how beautiful it is today. I figured out one time that in a regular game, mm -hmm. each team's got like 70 plays. We'll, we'll do over a thousand pieces of information what? in one game. <laughs> yeah, so thank you again. You're so welcome. Cool. Nice yes. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Man, go Ducks. Oh my gosh, go Ducks. Yes. Last year, but it's, uh, it's been a thing for a couple of years now. Wow, yeah. okay. I'm sorry, but that's the coolest thing ever. Now I know where it comes from. <laughs> okay, so everyone, every time we get a touchdown, there's been this touchdown horn. Look up here and be like, no one knows where it's ever been until now. Oh my goodness. That is so cool! My leg warmer! Yes, thanks! Ducks 
And a Buffalo, Colorado here at Autzen Stadium tonight. Chris Knight here on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Respect to the band for that UO. Yo, this is so cool. Okay, quick fact about the duck. He always comes out in a weird manner. Seven steps up into the pocket. Oh, got wide open. Three touchdown. When CJ Riddell, one of our players, does something crazy, we actually play Crazy Train. Fourth down, we have something as well. And of course, we have Mighty Organ when we get a touchdown. All right. Thank you. 